of the Board of Assessment Appeals. Uh, today is Saturday, March the 6th. Uh, it is 9.14 a.m. Uh, and I call this meeting to order. I will announce the attendees for this meeting. And as I mentioned your name, uh, please repeat your name for the record. Uh, I will begin. My name is Harold Zawatsky. I am the chairman and I am here. Uh, Peter Rupert. Yeah, Peter Rupert here. Kathleen Griffin. Kathleen Griffin here. Paulette Cuzo. Here. Uh, Catherine Giff. Catherine Giff is here. John Spolier. John Spolier is here. Ronnie Patel. Ronnie Patel, President. Judy Sayblack. Judy Sayblack is currently not present and she may join the meeting later. The purpose of this meeting is to do deliberate. Do you think Harrison? I'm sorry, Alexis. Alexis Harrison. Alexis Harrison is here. Thank you. You're in the middle of my list. I shouldn't have missed you. Uh, oh, the purpose... the first <laughs> okay. Uh, the deliberation, uh, the purpose of this meeting is to deliberate and vote upon appeals that were properly brought before the board and heard by the members. We have eight of our nine members present currently and the deliberations will be voted on by a mar majority of the members in this case uh, will be a uh, in all cases it will be a majority of excuse me in this case it will be a majority of five okay uh anyone wish to add anything before we begin with the first appeal uh kathleen you are you are muted Sorry, I just have some housekeeping issues, but maybe we want to wait for Judy for that if she's going to join us, or do you want me to just, we can fill her in later too. Um, so. Certainly, if uh, if you're ready to do that, please. Yeah. Okay, so I just sort of, when you're presenting your appeal, just to remind everybody, if you could, hopefully it's on the top of your note sheet, um, just please read into the record uh, the appeal number, the street number, the street address, um, the owner of the property. Um, and then, you know, who was present, who presented to you, um, and then maybe a quick description of the property. Just say, you know, this is a two bedroom, two bath Cape, or this is in the Penfield neighborhood or something, you know, just, just to give everybody else a, a little bit of an idea of, you know, where your, where your uh, property is located, um, and then present your appeal to the board. Um, we will, um, make your presentation if you're comfortable making a recommendation at that point on on your property decision you can make a motion um if you feel you want some board input before the vote you certainly can you know say say i'm you know maybe i'm thinking of this or i need some help with this does anybody have you know something they can assist me with on this um because since there's going to be nine of us you know it's going to be a little harder to Muted. recognize everybody and um was I going to say? And then, you know, you make your motion and uh, Harold will call for a second. Um, or if you're not comfortable making a motion, you want someone else to do it, that's totally fine too. And then, um, you know, Harold will just say, you know, is there any discussion on this item? And then, you know, when the discussion is closed, we take a vote. I just think it's good when you start, just give, you know, read that information into the record so that it's pretty clear and anybody we need to go back to the tape. And um, Prue, I think you're writing this down as well, but if you could sort of keep track of the time that we start to talk about a particular property, that's going to be helpful for anybody who wants to then go find those deliberations, you know, in the recording since it's five hours. You know, it's we, we've done that with the hearing, so that should be helpful, but I think we should continue that practice um, with the deliberations. Um, um, Think that Harold, did I miss anything? Um, I would, I would think we have to come to an agreement. If we have a technical problem, if someone uh, we lose someone of our currently eight members that are on the panel, uh, how shall we proceed? Shall we wait to that person 
can reconnect or shall we suspend? Um, what do you think the best way is to handle that? Oh, this is Kathleen. The other thing I forgot to mention is just sorry to state your name before you before you speak. Um, I mean, I, everybody can weigh in on that, I guess, if you want, since we have a large number, you know, it's good that we have everybody at least on the first day. So, or, or our second day so that we can um, kind of figure these things out. How does it work? I know some people need to leave at a certain time. I know there's other ones who, you know, may join later um, or people need to take an hour off to go do something. That doesn't mean we can stop the meetings. Um, so, and you're talking about technical issues. Um, I don't know. How does everybody feel about that? If your line gets dropped, do you want us to stop the conversations? I guess if you're presenting, obviously that would be appropriate to stop. Um, this is Carol. Yes, before a motion is made, we can we can stop and then we can move on to the next appeal and then continue when that person reconnects. This is Harold. Okay. Yeah. So um, I would like to su suggest beginning with an appeal that we started to hear in our last deliberations, uh, which we suspended because uh, we want to verify the information that was on the petition. Um, and I'm referring, is that okay with everyone? Sure. I'm referring to appeal number 249. This is Harold speaking. The owner of the property is Patrick McInerney at 528 Lally Boulevard in Fairfield, Connecticut. Uh, the uh, appeal was presented on Wednesday, March 3rd at 9.15 a.m. And a correction was made to the petition after speaking to Mr. McInerney yesterday uh, because he had put on the petition the assessed values, not the appraised values. And he agreed that the uh, his fair market value opinion is uh, $785,714 and that uh, the town's value is $881,700. $881, and that was agreed uh, via telephone with him uh, yesterday afternoon at 12 p.m. So I think we can proceed with this one. Uh, he claims that uh, it is hey, um, probably... Harold. Yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I I just saw an email from uh, a member of the public saying that the uh, line had dropped. The public line has dropped. So I can see it, and I can see people on it. I'm okay, not okay. sure. Perhaps that was from earlier. Uh, it says 920, so. That's two minutes ago. Yeah. Anyway. Is there any way to check that uh, uh, you say that uh, prove that the uh, other members are hearing? Do we see any notif other emails or notifications of drop lines? Unmuted. I am on that line, and when I'm speaking, I can see that my, you know, I, I can see that I'm active. Okay. Perhaps they misdialed. I don't know what the situation. Muted. Was. But if you, but if you see other phone numbers that have been connected, then I think we can proceed. I'm going to call it again from my phone and go in the other room and just check it again. Okay, let's just be sure. Okay. Uh, it's Kathleen. the 727. Yep, let me do it again. It's Kathleen and, and she will check the lines for the benefit of the public to make sure that uh, they are able to listen in on our deliberations. Listen there are 10 people on the call right now. Okay.
Harold, can somebody talk, please? Somebody yes, talk. this is Harold speaking. Uh, we are we are talking about appeal number two four nine. Oops. Yeah, Harold, I can't I can't hear you on the conference call. You you don't hear me on the conference call line. Excuse me. Yeah, I got it right here. It's not. It, I'm and, not hearing. Okay. And members, you are hearing me. Yeah. 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 Are the members hearing me on this? Yes. Yeah. On yeah. Webex. Yeah. This is a separate thing. It's the we have the conference in the conf you know the line. Yeah. Like we like we do for our meetings. Yes, yeah, so I, I just want to confirm that the Webex connection is working. And the Webex is. is working, and I I don't know why. Uh, I do have people who are still on the line, so I don't know if they can hear me or not. Um, but is there is there commuted? You couldn't hear. No. Okay. So I'm not sure what's happening now because they just uh, Kathy just called in also, and she couldn't hear. So, but it's seven two seven seven three one seven four seven nine. Yeah. Okay. Make sure that that line that that public line is not muted. If it's muted, then they won't be able to hear. It seems like the web is unmuted. Try again now. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I I can yes. hear you. I'm just going to make sure that. Now you can hear me too, right? I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Right. So you're hearing me through the conference call. Okay. Then we are. Does that designate a uh, connection? No, that that's not good. That's, so, that's indicating a connection. Okay. Right. All so right. that. So. I I don't know. Can, is it okay if I can I unmute someone from the public who I can see their name and ask them if they can hear us? Yeah, or I can. We can go back in the other room. The question is, can they talk? Because you know we wouldn't. You know, if people are listening, we just don't want all their background noise. You know, on our call. So how are you right, muting? But I can mute them again. You mute them with what? What do we use in our instructions? Is it star? And you put them. You put the call in lecture mode, right? Yes, that's it. They are in lecture mode. Yes. Right. And then you start the recording. All participants uh -huh. are muted. Okay. Now all participants are muted. So I'm going to call again. Well, they were. I, I just did that again just to just because I was already there. Now it's all right. Oh, she said now it's working. Well, I can hear you. Yeah. And I'm, I'm talking to my phone. Harold, I just got a text from somebody that said they can hear now. Oh, okay. Again, I uh, think that's, to, that's just to point something out to mute the, this is Harold, to mute the public, you, you press star five and then two for lecture mode. And then to begin the yep. recording, which you've already done, presumably star nine and then a one. Yes. Harold, oh, excuse me, it's work, the, I'm getting text saying that it's working now. Excellent. Can we proceed? This is Harold. Yes. Drew, um, yes. you feel that everything is, is good? Yes. Okay. Getting back to deliberating on appeal number 249, uh, Patrick McInerney, 528 Lally Boulevard in Fairfield. Uh, the appellant came in that the uh, it's an older house built in 1945. Uh, there is excessive water. Uh, marshlands that cross into his property and neighboring properties at. Uh, one property is at. 272. Two, uh, Fairfield Beach Road. Uh, on Lally Boulevard, oh, well, I point out uh, the numbers that he indicated 490, 462, uh, 440, excuse me, 462, 494, 510, and 528. So there is no supporting information 
I see on the field card that there's no indication of, uh, there is a notation that says rear of property floods up to 40 feet, but I don't see any adjustment uh, on the property to allow for wetlands and I don't have access to a wetlands survey map. So uh, in light of the fact that we don't have that supporting information, I would um, ask the assessor's office to investigate this property and the uh, effect that the marsh and water uh, might have on the property uh, and then revisit this at a later date. So I'm suggesting we suspend this um, because there is an indication on the card that there is 40 feet of flooding on the property. And I want to uh, give the benefit of the doubt that perhaps the uh, portion of the land is not properly assessed. So this is Paulette. Harold? Yes, I, Kathleen. I just wanted to point out, it's Paulette. I just wanted to point oh. out on, on this property. We, I think you're right, we should investigate it, but it says it is listed as having flooding. If we were to look at the, um, the public record where you can click on the map and see the lot and get the lot dimensions, I think we're gonna find that this property is only 0.17, it looks like. So, 0.18, excuse me. So it doesn't have a big piece of property. I bet if we looked at that map, just so we have more information, I'm not saying we should make a decision today, that we should be able to see where we think about 40 feet. I bet that property isn't much deeper than that. Maybe it's 60 feet. So in light of that, it's a small lot. It's an, it's um, a non-conforming lot and with water on it, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm thinking in my head that once we confirm that what he's telling us is true, I would then think that we would need to deliver or to discuss a reduction because there's no way this property can be worth as much as they're saying it is with the size of it, with flooding, with wetlands, you can't do anything with it. So I think we would want to take those things into consideration when we think back. That's all. Uh, this is Harold, I agree. Uh, we can consider a reduction, uh, but for the benefit of the appellant, I think we can ask the assessor to take a look and see if uh, the adjustment can be made to the property and wait for him to get back to us before we make a decision. I agree. All right, yeah. Kathleen. Oh, yeah, I just want to make one other comment too, is that, right, we just also will ask him at the same time to, um, Look at the neighbor's properties that are similar to that to see if the issue, you know, is exacerbated on his property compared to those of his neighbors to make sure that, you know, we're sort of not just that, that we're, you know, being fair and how we're doing it. If we give him a wetlands reduction and all his neighbors have equal properties, you know, do we feel, you know, or to check around? So, not just to look at the ask him to not just look at that 1 property, but also look at the other properties that back up to that marsh area. Yes, just to conclude, uh, the appellant, uh, Mr. McInerney, did provide a hand-drawn map uh, and listing the other properties, so the assessor uh, should be able to utilize that information and uh, uh, with the topography and flooding map, see if his land is included in that sa uh, same area and suffering the same issues. Okay, so let's move on. Oh, so, oh, I was, I'm sorry. Whether you want to do the order or I do, I was going to um, suggest next, I believe Ronique had a appeal that we heard the other night and the um, zoning department, I don't recall the appeal number, but zoning got back on that Creekside lot that was um, designated a buildable lot. And I believe the appellant was requesting that it was recategorized as an unbuildable lot. And I think, the assessor said um, he right he added documentation and an answer to the to the uh, to that question. Ronique, did you have a chance to look at that answer? So I looked up and I believe it's appeal number two fifty four, um, and I didn't see anything that was um, added from zoning. Um, so I was just a little bit um, weary of it, unless it's a different appeal number. So is it possible to find the appeal number on that again? 
Sure, this is Kathleen. Do you recall the property owner's name? Was it Sergeant? Was it Mr. Sergeant? No, this one's Rosario. Um, hang on then. If you spell that, Ronique, I can try to look it up. Um, for Rosario, um, I can't find Sergeant. I don't have a a Sergeant on my list. This is John. I do believe that it is 254. Yeah, uh, this, is, I, it, this is with uh, 2164 Fairfield Beach Road. Yeah. Okay, yep. What is it? Yeah, it is so 254. Yeah, okay. so appellant um, Rosario and Antoinette DeVico, um, they claimed on appeal, oh, this is Ronique Patel, an appeal number 254. Um, 2164 Fairfield Beach Road. Um, they they said that they're not allowed to have structure because of the easement on the entire lot. Um, zoning confirmed that it is a buildable lot. And so I would motion to deny um, the requested value of $55,000 um, when we have an appeal amount of 66600 on that property lot. This is Paulette. Um, I, have, I have a question. Did you just say that the zoning said it is a buildable lot? Yes, and the appellant said it is not. It isn't. You can't build on those lots. And by the way, it's, we have, he has a, a document here in his, in his paperwork that says that the easement does run through the entire property. So somebody's, something's not, I'm, I'm still not clear on whether it is or isn't buildable. If there's a big yeah. easement, through, you can't build on it. So I don't know what the, I don't know what zoning was thinking. So drainage easement is located over the entire parcel of land. And there's, there's a drainage pipe. Uh, that the shall assume this is Kathleen. Yeah, yeah. I think it. I, I think. I think it's the opposite. I think zoning did did agree that it was not a buildable lot. I believe oh, that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I can't find the uh, notice from Jim Went. Does somebody have the notice from Jim Went? I don't see it in the in the documents either. Ross said he added it to the file, but I don't see it added. So I'm wondering what process he's using to add things to the file that maybe we're missing it. Don't know. I can. See if I can find out from him. Uh, uh. All right. I don't see it. Yeah, and I'm not either. I mean, if I see if I if I see that zoning did <laughs> say that it's not a buildable lock, I would be comfortable approving this appeal. Um, this is Remy Patel, but I would need. I, I would like to have verification that zoning did say that this is not a buildable lot. Um, this is Kathleen. I think the field he added, let me just see. I think Ross added the new field card. Sometimes what happens with our browsers, if you're looking at the backup, you need to take that link and put it in a different browser because sometimes it doesn't repaste the browser. So let me see if I can see the card here. So I'm looking at the wrong one. Oh, where's the top of it? This is Paulette. Well, Kathleen's looking. I just want to point out that the lots on that side of the street that are like this, they're not buildable. None of them are. It's not just that one. If there's a structure on it now, you're not going to be able to replace it if it comes down. Unless, the, unless there's a, a piece of land that's much bigger. But on these, they're not buildable. So zoning, there should be some, maybe Kathleen can find it. I hope she can. <clears throat> yeah, this is Kathleen. I, the, the field cards in the back, what's the property address? I'm not told, there's a couple of field cards in the package, but they're all dated. The, the print dates are 2-17-2021. So perhaps the process that Ross is using to add the data to the, you know, to the PDF is, he may be uploading it someplace else and we're not getting it from our links. I'm not sure. Appeal number 249, what am I looking at? Uh, appeal, appeal number 
four, and that's the location address of 2164 Fairfield Beach Road. 2164. There is a field card in that city, 2164. This is Remy. Yeah, did he include a field card from somebody else? I think that's what I'm looking at. This is John. I'm looking at uh, VGSI right now, and it looks like it hasn't been updated in there. Yeah. In the field card. Okay. Uh, the print date that's linked with Vision Solutions is from 2 9, so February 9th. This is so that I agree we need to know for sure, but if you look at the map that's included in the paperwork, it shows you that there's something that runs right through the center of that property. Unfortunately, they I don't know what the ADS stands for, but something runs right through the property. So we should just we just need to verify it. I think we're going to find that it's not buildable, but we'll wait. Can, can someone confirm that there was communication made that um, verbally that this property is not buildable? Can someone confirm that that came from zoning? Verbally, so we can go with a decision on this property. Uh, this is Kathleen Ross <laughs> said he might join the call sometime between 11 and 12. So, if we can keep a list of questions for him, but I was talking to him about a variety of things yesterday, you know, and how he was and what putting things, how he wanted to handle questions that came up in our deliberations to make sure that the public saw the answers to those questions and not just the board. So, he felt strongly that he wanted to. You know, uh, modify the the uh, appeal backup online. Add that notice and email to the backup online so everybody can see it, and you know we can use that in our deliberations. But like I said, I think we're all clicking on the appeal. Then John checked the field card on Vision. The Vision data is updated once a week, um, and um, and in the email to the board, he indicated to us that he had an answer from Jim Went, but I don't believe he said what the answer was in the text of the email because he wanted the answer to all be in writing and on the in the backup. So I think that's um, probably one we can get him to confirm if we can get him to call in. So um, actually, Kathleen, I realize that is not the appeal number that Ross was referring to. Ross is referring to appeal number 324 at 2189 Fairfield Beach Road. I do see the email attachments from Ross showing that that property is not in fact buildable. And this is how. So appeal number 324 is, is that question at 2189 Fairfield Beach Road for Dave Grella. And that was due to the FEMA wall. And there's no access to bills. That was the large discrepancy because the appellant was requesting a value of 93,000, where we have it appraised at 856,400. <laughs> Kathleen, I'll quickly read into the record if you like the uh, I found the backup. He did it. He did update the backup with it. So he says, Ross, I have attached a survey for 21. <clears throat> sorry, let me put this. For 2197 that indicates that the coastal jurisdiction line is approximately 20 feet off the face of the retaining wall. A portion of 2189 is shown on the map, indicating that the CJL is even closer to the wall on this site. Given the narrow depth between the wall and the CJ and lack of overall area, it is my opinion that this parcel is not a building lot. And that was sent by Jim Went uh, Friday, March 5th at 1114 in the morning. Yeah, and because of that confirmation and the large difference between value of what the appellant is requesting and the current value, um, I do feel comfortable with zoning being we went and evaluated, confirmed that it's not a buildable lot. And so with appeal number 324, property address 2189 Fairfield Beach Road, appellant Dave Grella, I do motion to approve his requested amount of $93,000. Um, this, this is Kathleen, the, the field card that Ross put out with the, vet, with the modification says 95,200. So he must have done, you know, whatever his pretty consistent for the Creekside lots based on that. So if you look at the new field card, it won't be on um, the, it is in the backup for that item. 
you know, the very last thing is the new field card and he notes on it. So that's the value that he assigned to it 95,200 probably and, you know, to be consistent with. Um, how he values the other Creekside non buildable lots in in that condition. So what page is that on? This is Harold. Can you hear me? This is Kathleen. Yes. Page 12 and 13. Uh, I, I would just like to take a, a, a moment. Uh, it is currently 944 AM on the, the 6th of March. And I'd like to state that Judy Sayblack board member has joined our meeting and she is the ninth member to join our meeting. Welcome Judy. Uh, we can proceed. I'm sorry for the interruption. No worries. This is Kathleen. It's, I see it on page 12 re revised consistent with 2197 Fairfield Beach Road. So what he did was he, he put the condition factor of 0.1 on it. He circled that in pen and then um, he wrote, you know, he, he did it similar to another property of similar size that's vacant on the creek side um, and reduced it to 95,200. So. I mean, you can you can make a friendly motion, I believe, uh, Ronique, if you want to, or you can you know keep the motion you have on the table at the ninety three number. I mean, that's kind of up to you, but that's that's the value. When Ross changed it in the computer, it went to ninety five two hundred. So this then is Paulette. I, I, up that, go ahead, Paulette. I'm sorry, I, I have an issue with this. If I'm if I'm understanding it correctly, I, I the the assessor. He changed it fine, but he changed it to a different value than the appellate asked for. And I don't think that's right. If he, if the, now in this case, the appellate does not have supporting documents showing other properties' values. So I guess we would say, okay, well, it's this or nothing. So let's go with the 95,000. But we can't be allowing him to go in and take another shot at reassessing properties. If somebody asks for a number and the, and the town is way off like this and they give to, and they have supporting documents. I don't think that the assessor should go in there and just do what he wants. I don't care about his calculations. They ask for something, and if they provide documentation, we need to go with that and not let him change it to suit him. I'm just sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound rude, but I've had it with that. He is not the person. He doesn't just go and do what he wants. We're supposed to be in charge of making sure everything's fair and equal. This isn't right. In this case, it is because he didn't provide that other, other um, comps. But I think we need to look at that later on down the road and not make it a precedent that he can just go in there and make whatever, whatever he wants it to be. He had his shot. And by the way, I'd also like him to ask the person who evaluated his property how he could be so wrong of, of, of hundreds of seven hundred and something, eight hundred thousand dollars difference. How could he possibly think this land was worth that? Really, seriously, I'm sure somebody else must think it, but nobody else is willing to say it. But I'll say it. This is this is this is criminal. This is wrong. So uh, I'll agree with Ross because we don't have any other comps. But in the future, if there's comps, I'm not going to just go along with that. He needs to learn not to do that. That's uh, all. Th this is Harold. I'd like to just make a brief comment. Uh, I don't believe that the assessor does make uh, changes to the card independent of other information. Changes are made to the card based upon inaccurate information. And also during this uh, revaluation period, changes are made to the card as a result of informal hearings. But, but this is, I, I guess my wonder, Russ isn't here, so I can't ask him, but. Why did he choose 95,000 and not just go with the 93,000? What made him choose 95? Uh, this is Kathleen. It's not a lot of money, but. Oh, sure. Uh, this is Kathleen. I'm guessing uh, actually the appellant did appear to reference his neighbor's lot that's the same, similar size. So um, I'm guessing I, I'm not, I don't have the two of them up next to each other. I'm guessing it's because there's a slight square footage difference between the two lots. And instead of the, the appellant asked for 93,000. So when Ross put the same square footage into the computer that they use to calculate the things it probably has, you know, we could, if somebody wants to call up both of those properties, it's 21. What's the <laughs> 2189 is the subject property and he provided the field card right for his neighbor at 21. Uh, let's see 20, 2197. Yeah, 2197. Right. So if someone wants to look at the square footage difference, you know, in vision between those two lots, I'm guessing that's where the extra, you know, $2,200 comes from is from uh, him doing that. 
And so he, that's probably why he, you know, said the appellant says the appraisal, this must be a mistake. The identical lot next door, 2197, which was subdivided many years ago, is it's properly valued. Thank you for your attention for correcting this error. So I'm guessing it's a slight in the beach area. The square footage really does affect the land value of those properies. So I don't know if somebody can. So this look is up. John. Um, it looks like for. 20 uh, with the owner Phoenix at 2197 Fairfield Beach Group. Um, they have a size lot size of 3200 square feet. And the subject property is. Let's see, turn my head here. Oh, we don't have different field cards every time. Let's see. Uh, 52. 27, it looks like. On 2189, which is the subject property. Yes. Okay, so this is Kathleen. I'm guessing it's that 2000 square foot difference between 2197 at 3200 square feet and the subject property at 5227. That is the $2,500 difference between the two properties. There's 2197. And I do trust that we did our due diligence to reevaluate this property. And the difference between the square footage and the two properties, the way they're located, um, from, from our appeal office of $25,200, um, I feel comfortable doing a partial um, acceptance of this appeal um, of 25,200 and not the requested value of 93,000 based on the information presented from the appeal office and through zoning. Um, uh, so this is Ronique Patel. I would like to do a partial acceptance on appeal number 324, uh, property address 2189 Fairfield Beach Road from Dave Grella. Um, to approve a partial acceptance of $25,200 for this appeal. Uh, Roni, this is Kathleen. Uh -huh. I think you need 95,200. 95,000. I have right in 95. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. That's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> Very big. $95,200. Is there a mo is there a second? This is Harold. I second. Uh, I, I I would like to abstain from this only because I did not hear the entire appeal, so I'm not going to vote on this one. Okay. okay. Alexis uh, Harris is here. Um, similar to Judy, Judy Say Black. From the record, it's Judy Say Black. Thank you. Uh, I will call the vote. Uh, if you are in favor of the reduction, raise your hand. Those that I cannot see, Alexis and uh, Catherine and Paula. Carol, I'm going to abstain for, on this one when you call the apps um, to abstain because I did not hear this whole appeal. And Paulette, I see your hand raised in favor yes. of yes. the reduction. And yes. I believe we have two abstentions, Judy Sablak and Alexis Harrison, the motion is carried seven to two, uh, seven approved and two abstentions. Oh. This, is, this is Kathleen. Yeah, just Prue and uh, I think Kathy's there too. So just as we get started, we call that a grant in part. If you're going to do the mail merge for the minutes, it's called, you know, we call it a grant granted in part. Um, there's grant, grant right. part, and deny are usually the three motions we make, um, and it would be the vote was actually um, seven zero two. Just to be clear, not seven two zero because they didn't vote no; they just abstained. So for those numbers, the seven is the yeses, the, the zero is the noes, and the last number is the uh, the yeah the abstentions at the end. Sorry, two is the denials or noes, and the third one is the abstentions. Uh, this is Harold. Kathleen, thank you. Uh, we'll follow that system going forward. Uh, 
Uh, do we have someone who wants to do the next? So this yeah, is Carol. this is Kath. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Kathleen. I think we I, last night trying to organize a little bit for this morning. Um, I think we uh, requested that um, Alex, Peter, Ronique, since they're all here, they all heard the beach. If there, um, couple issues with the Fairfield Beach area. Um, one, it's complicated because we have the Creekside properties as well as the beach side. Some are combined. Some are separate sales. Um, uh, and um, Mr. Fazio is also providing us with some additional sales data information that uh, the assessor was not able to get on the website last night. He was waiting for confirmation from the town attorney that it's okay to publish that for the public and everybody. So um, we're just waiting on that. So I would just, and Ross is not here today to help us understand how those parcels are put together. So I would just say, if there's some that you're confident in, you know, one way or the other, either, you know, um, and if we, if you end up presenting a complicated one, that doesn't mean we can't talk about it. And, you know, it, I just, just keep in mind that there may be more information coming on vacant lot sales um, and there, you know, and um, also the assessor's input, cause just cause it's so complicated down there. So, and if, you know, Alexis has some, she wants to present or Peter, Ronique, I mean, I'm, I'm good with that. I think we should. See if we can get a few because I think what did we have 60 or something in Fairfield Beach area? So Fairfield Beach Road. So we probably should try to make a little progress. I see a hand raised by yeah. Catherine. Uh that's Catherine Daff. Um just wanted to say I'm gonna hop off to um to not complicate the numbers and to use this time to better prepare for the next neighborhood. So um I don't have much. I haven't been hearing Fairfield Beach property, so I will be back in about an hour, an hour and a half. Okay. I don't think will that affect the quorum in any way. I just wanted to confirm that. Okay. I'm going to go prepare for uh, the next neighborhood. Thank you all. Good luck. I'll see you all in about an hour. Kath Kathleen, yes. This is Harold. I'm sorry. I was waving goodbye. Yes, that's fine. All right. <coughs> Okay. I'm oh, so Judy. Oh, I'm sorry. Judy just said she has a couple that she would like to present since this is her well, first meeting, first presentation. Do you want to do those, Judy? Or, or and Ronique is ready too, so that's good. And I know Alexis has to leave at what eleven. Less Actually, I can, I can stay till about eleven forty-five. Okay. So I think Judy has two quick ones that she wants to do. I I do. Thank you. I'm just going to pull it up. Um, here with me a second. Um, it's their um, appeal number 502. And I'm just going to pull that up while we're talking. And that is on 1662 Fairfield Beach Road. Let me get to it. And now it's now it doesn't want to pull up the actual uh, appeal. The uh, appellant did not show for the hearing. So um, we don't have any other further, in, and he, he didn't show. So I don't know how you, what do you do with that when they don't? What, what's the name of the appellant? This is Remy speaking. It's Paul Leandino. There are, con, there are two condos, number 1662 Fairfield Beach Road and 1657 Fairfield Beach Road. And that's uh, appeal number 503. So appeal number 502 and 503. Um, this is Kathleen. I believe he has made a rescheduling request. I don't know whether his hearings have been rescheduled or not. Um, you know, we're trying to keep the reschedules with the same officer who was assigned the properties. As I'm, I know you guys all have been looking at your properties. So um, well, one of the things I meant, went to mention at the beginning is we have been blessed with a uh, part time person in the assessor's office finally. So, whether her official title is BA clerk or a uh, part timer in the assessor's office, um, I have been using her <laughs> regularly as the BA clerk to help us with some paperwork and things like that. And one of the tasks she was given on Thursday or Friday of this week was to help with all the rescheduling since it's a lot of coordination. So, in this case, we can decide whether we want to deny the initial no shows or we want to wait on those until 
you know, if they if we are aware of a rescheduling request, do we want to wait on those until, you know, we potentially, as you know, by statute, we're not required to grant anybody a reschedule. Um, obviously, we try to accommodate people, especially with medical surgery conditions or if they're out of town or anything like that. But, you know, no, by the statutes, we're not required. And with 650 volunteers, you know, many of us who people work full time. Um, you know, it's hard. It, it, it's a, it's a yeah. feat in and of itself. So at, at any rate, whether we want to decide how we might want to handle these ones um, going forward. And I, I have another question. Who's speaking? Uh, sorry, Hell speaking. Um, I do see the appellant emailed on February 27th at 5.56 a.m. Saying to reschedule, um, and so there is a request to reschedule from the appellant, and I do believe that he was trying to reach out to make sure he can get his case heard. This is Harold. As Kathleen says, by statute, we are not required to reschedule. However, uh, with uh, in respect to our fellow Fairfield citizens, uh, we will labor to accommodate uh, requests for rescheduling and uh, try to do so as we can accommodate them. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Alexis Harrison here. I had a question, if I may. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I received a note or a call from a resident in the Fairfield Beach area about the appeal. He has tried to contact our assessor about it to no avail, and I flagged it to Ross yesterday. I just want to make sure the residents are being heard. I know there's a large volume of petitions. <clears throat> I just want to, and I want to make sure the public is heard and they are feeling, you know, that they are taken care of. So I just want to raise that to, to you and to this body. It's this a, is it's Kathleen. A, it's a concern of mine when constituents are not being heard by the tax assessor. Okay. Right. This this is Kathleen Ross lost. I think everybody knows this, but he lost two of his longtime employees with the early retirement program in um, December. Um, and one of them was the clerk for the Board of Assessment Appeals for, I don't know, like 10 years. I have no idea, but she's been doing it for a long time. And those people were not, they were not immediately replaced. So he's been basically doing everything himself until he got a part timer who started. Catherine, Catherine Napolitano is her name. She's excellent. She is checking uh, the BAA does have a phone number now for for messages. Um, and, you know, there is the BAA email address. I ask that Catherine be added to that. And so I believe we were, you know, if people have issues. That phone number is being monitored by the assessor's office. So hopefully now that Catherine's been hired um, and I just know she's only part time. Um, you know, that people should be getting return phone calls. I've seen all her yellow stickies from all the messages that she's picked up and she sent me a spreadsheet of the reschedules that she's, you know, she's aware of. So in this case, certainly if there's, you know, as secretary, if there's something that's brought to your attention, feel free to bring it to me and I will bring it up with Catherine. Um, and you can also communicate with her directly. Uh, I, she's been copied on the last few of our emails, so you'll probably have her email, but. Um, it's nice to have somebody pretty much dedicated to us for the month of March. So that's a that's a big relief. You so know, that's given the, the Ross is still short. I, I oh, this is Alexis. I would just add that I did um, copy our entire board on this email too. So if, if Harold feels comfortable responding to the gentleman, that maybe that would help you know relieve Ross of you know work that he has to do. Um, the, this is Harold. Uh, the public is certainly. Uh, Invited to recontact the BAA if they don't hear uh, in a timely fashion a response to a phone call or message that they sent, uh, just to uh, redouble their efforts to contact the office. Right. Um, this is Kathleen. I mean, the, if if it's a rescheduling issue, question response. Um, that's one issue. If they did not file on time, you know, that's a state statute issue. That, you know, everybody in the state, if you have an appeal, you're required to file by February 20th, 2021, you know, for this grand list year. And that's, that's in the statutes, just as it is, you know, you're required. 
Kathleen, to, to the gentleman who, who missed it, he had a death in the family. But again, this is customer service. This is, I think, just a courtesy. I don't, you know, deadline, no deadline. I think that would just be helpful and help our constituents because we do represent them here. All right. Yep. This is Paulette. I um I saw that email from Alexa, and I have to say that I've received, and I think we all did. I don't know if everybody got them, but I received email chains relating to uh, the public asking a particular question about neighborhoods and those one, two, three numbers. I don't even understand them. Uh, and they've sent them directly to Ross, and he's not responded. And this has gone on for several emails through the chain. I realize he might be overworked, but as long as there's somebody in the department now, that's probably a good thing. Maybe we can get that resolved. So. I'm going to check back with these people and see if by Wednesday of next week, they've gotten some kind of a response. And quite frankly, on the record, I asked the same question in a hearing the other night and he ignored me too. So I think that we need to start answering questions if we're going to be transparent. Yeah, this, yeah, this is Kathleen. I did, I did have that. Oops. I did have that question. Um, I had that discussion with him yesterday. Um, and I requested that he either do a video or write up um, some documents that we can put on the website about the revaluation process and some of these, you know, these these questions that are coming up over and over again about square footage or how the process worked, um, you know, so that the generalized questions, you know, the more we go through this process and hear in our own hearings as well as he hears in his office what the questions are from the public. Um, you know, I said, you, you know, a Q&A would be great. A lot of our departments have that, you know, that just answers the, the, the general questions. So he told me he would work on that sooner, you know, as as quickly as he could so that he doesn't have to tell his story a lot of times. Um, some of them are in the videos that, you know, he did or the uh, recordings of the presentations to the beach and all of that. A lot of these are more, you know, about how the process worked or how did they do this? How did they do that? How'd you come up with this number? You know, those are more general questions and he agreed that he would write those up, you know, when he ha when he has some time. And now that Catherine is able to take, uh, Napolitano is able to take some of the administrative, hopefully some of the, he's doing all the mail merges. He's putting all of the papers in our folders for us. I mean, you know, he's been doing copying, so he's just been, you know, completely overwhelmed with all of just no, trying no to keep doubt. us on track. So, no he, but he did say he would do the notes. Yeah. Uh, this is Harold. Uh, I, I would just like to comment that I think that we should utilize our time uh, for the purpose of this meeting, and that is to do deliberations and to vote on those deliberations. Uh, any questions regarding other business should be set aside. They can com be communicated to the BAA or individual members on an as needed basis. So I'd like to suggest that we continue with the deliberation and hold off on extraneous comments until another time. Thank you. And, and that's fine. I just raised it because no one responded to me and this seemed like the appropriate place. No one responded to me. If it was, if I had been responded to, I wouldn't have brought it up Harold. So just be aware of that. This is Harold. Thank you, Alexis. Uh, and it's understood and we respect uh, you reaching out on behalf of a fearful citizen. All right, um, next deliberation, this is Harold speaking. Uh, this, yes, Kathleen. This is Kathleen. I think Judy had a, um, had two that she had at least started to present. I don't know if she made a motion or not, and if we made a decision on whether we want to just not vote yet on this, take no act. I think the, the, uh, the proper term is to take no action on these two, given that we do know we have confirmed that he ha is trying to reschedule. Do you need that? Uh, this is Judy Sablak. Do you need that in the form of a motion from me, Kathleen? Uh, this is Kathleen. I think we can just take no action, which is not really, you know, the, I don't, I don't think we have to vote to take. Alexis probably knows this. I don't think you have to take to vote no action. We just take no action. Correct. Um, That's right. Yeah, since there's no motion on the table. So we brought it up, you know, but we will take it up at another time given that, you know, and if we are unable to reschedule him by the end of the process, then we would certainly, you know, then we could vote on it at that time as a no-show. Okay. Thanks. This is Kathleen. Judy, did you have one other one you want to do? Or Monique's ready? Peter might be ready. <laughs> you 
You guys all have to I was going to do two, those two that were no shows. I do have one other one. It's my first. Um, so please bear with me. I hope I do everything correctly. This is um, a, a, appeal number 210 is Declan Marr and it's 693 Fairfield Beach Road. The uh, town's value is 8032. The appellant's opinion of fair market value is 700,000. Their condos, they're identical floor plans. And it's just really interesting for this particular complex. There are uh, two units of identical square feet uh, of 1,890 square feet. Uh, and their value is 688 and 663. And uh, number 680 and those same square footage as his at, as the subject and number 687 which has a finished attic which makes it now 2268 square feet that has a value of 785. now we have a value or the the town has appraised it at 8032 and the appellant is only asking for he's asking for a reduction to 700. he's actually if you look at the other two units, which are the same exact size, between 663 and 688 to 600, for the same exact size, he's not being unreasonable by asking for a, a value of 700,000. He certainly is not at the number, uh, when we look at the other home with the larger square footage, that's even uh, appraised as 785. So he seems to be very, very reasonable and at the 700,000 value. He's not trying to, you know, work the system at all. And I, I, I'm all in favor of granting him at that 700. I don't know if I did that right or not. Uh, you absolutely did. Um, and you can make a motion, but I do have a question. Is this a condominium? Yes. Okay, and what was the appeal number again? Number 210. And the owner's name? Is Declan Marr, and I did state that for the record. Yes, you did, I missed it. Uh, so, yes, please feel free to make a motion unless there is further discussion. I see Kathleen raising her hand. Yes, Kathleen. Yeah, sure, this is Kathleen. Water view, if that's another question, he doesn't have it. Okay, so, um, the, these kinds of discussions sort of came up the other night. So there's the, just to reiterate, there's, there's the possibility that his neighbors are under appraised, right? That the town has them too low. So often when these questions come in and people are comparing themselves to their neighbors, the additional question we always try to ask them is, okay, well, you know, if, if, say the neighbors are too low, perhaps he is correct. Did he provide you with any sales data supporting the fact that his condo would not sell for you know that it is in fact if it was on the market in october 2020 it would have sold for 700 and not the 803 that we have him at because as you know with mass appraisal the appraisal process is never perfect so we're going to have people that are under we're going to have people that are over and we we're just trying to get to um you know, market value October 2020. So I just wondered if he gave you any sales to, to I, support. I do not, uh, thank you, Kathleen. I do not have any sales data uh, that was uh, included with us. However, um, you know, I look at that. Uh, there's two, those, those other two or three, and we're going to figure that the town pretty much does a good job I think that those other three that are right in the complex are very, very telling. And even though I don't have another comparable for it, I don't have a, a recent comparable for it, uh, I still believe he is, I still believe he's correct. And this is I, would Paul, like I to, agree with Judy. Thank you, Paul. You know, I understand that the other properties could be under appraised. However, the town appraised them. If we trust that their appraisals are right, at least 50% of the time, if not more, we have no way, we have no reason to think that they aren't right. There are no comps. There are no other condos that sold like this. He gave us the values of the neighbors. Those are the town's values. 
So as far as I'm concerned, if that's what the town says they're worth, that's what they're worth. So I have no problem with 700. This and is I think John. the value should be, I think the value should be during the evaluation period, October of 2019 through October of 2020, not the value of 2020, October 1st. That's the end of the period. You're supposed to be looking at the whole period. I said that the other day and I'm saying it again. That's all. This is Harold. I see a hand raised by John. Yeah, this is John. Um, I'm just looking at the vision solutions and I see that the uh, sale price was $730,000 back in 2009. While that data, you know, is fairly old, that's what, 11 years old. Um, we're just about 11 and a half based on the time that we're looking at. Um, is it is it acceptable to believe that the value has depreciated from the sale price by three or uh, by 30,000 since it was sold at 730. 2009 was a was a very strong height in the market and mm -hmm. there could have been you know I'm not quite sure that that was uh, I, I can't look at a 2009 value at all and yeah. And we'll get it for today's value, just as you wouldn't look at a 2003 or 2015 or 2018, even for this purpose. Yeah, it, 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 it's, uh, I understand that you're, a, a lot of people do that. I'm in real estate. A lot of people look at, well, they, but it was worth the X amount in whatever year, but it's not worth X amount in this year. So you can't, uh, as much as I appreciate that, and I thank you very much for bringing that up, uh, I'm still going by, uh, you know, what the current market value is as of October 1, 2020. I look at what the town appraised the other properties for within the complex. This gentleman is not looking for uh, a, a better deal than the other ones that are already appraised. He's actually, uh, he actually added a little bit. The other, one, the other ones were appraised as 663 and 688.6, and they're the same square footage. He's asking for 700. The one that town has a value with 785, and it's 2,200 square feet. It's 400 square feet more. I really believe he's reasonable. Is there a motion on the table for this property? I missed that. Pardon? Sorry, this is Renique speaking. Was there is there a motion um, on the table? I wasn't sure if I missed that. I'll make a motion that we uh, prove the appellant's request of 700,000 on uh, 693 Fairfield Beach Road. That is uh, file number, or appeal number 210. This is Harold, is there a second? This is Paul Adol's second. We have a second. I will call a vote by raise oh. hand. Uh, Can you, Kathleen? So just a little a little more discussion. I just I looked at the field card, just want to know we did deny him in 2019. I don't know what he asked for. I don't remember the reason for it, but he was denied by the BAA you know last year in 2019. Looking at the field card. That's just additional information. Yes. This is Harold. Uh, this is a new uh, appeal, so we can vote on this. Uh, with a raise of hands, all those in favor of uh, approving, uh, in favor of the reduc reduction to the requested $700,000, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, uh, I have Four votes for yes. Alexis, Alexis, are you there? Sorry, Alexis? I vote yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I, I vote in the affirmative. I have five votes in favor of the reduction. Uh, and uh, I would ask for denials. Raise your hand if you are in denial. I have one, two, three for denial. And do I have any abstentions? 
Ronique, I did not see your vote. I voted affirmative and I believe that was already counted. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, so we have. 6 approved. Uh, 2 denial and no extensions. Oh, this is Kathleen. I think it was 530. Yeah. It was 530. Yes, 530. Mm -hmm. 530. Thank you. Uh, right. I'm getting this order down pat soon. I think. All right, uh, 530 is the vote on this uh, recent appeal. Uh, moving on to the next one, does anyone have another? I'm ready if, if, um, if anyone else wanted to go before me, it's totally fine. But I, I have two appeals I can bring up. Uh, this is how we'll recognize Ronique next. I would like to bring up um, Two appeal numbers, but I'll start with one. They're under the same owner. Um, the first appeal number is 253, and that's for property address 2143 Fairfield Beach Road by Rosario and Antoinette DeVico. The, the appellant uh, requested a value of $830,100. The current value is $877,100. For this appeal, um, sorry, go ahead. You were saying, Harold? No, I have nothing to say. So, for this, bear with. This appellant was requesting a. Uh, a reduction based on the fact that the house is in a flood zone with no beach at high tide, um, did not provide any comparables. Um, Besides, oh, actually, I'm sorry, hold on, 2043. Just making, verifying that there was no comparable for the third time. Did not provide any comparables um, and believes that there's the reduction uses the ability to build because there's sand, sand that comes underneath the house. Um, I do not believe that she made a strong enough case for a reduction of 833,100. While there may be a case to be made for the fact that sand goes underneath it, I don't believe a strong enough case was made to, to reduce it to $833,100. Is there any discussion or questions on this property? Uh, this is Harold. Uh, I, I believe I was present at this hearing as well. And although they did uh, make statements to the effect that due to storm damage, this is a raised house, it is FEMA compliant. Uh, they do own a parcel of land across the road uh, and they are forced to park their cars on that uh, adjacent property because the sand has uh, receded and water runs un under the pillars of their raised home. But I do agree that you, uh, they have not proven their case that their property is impaired sufficiently to uh, recognize the reduction. It's, it's FEMA compliant. It's a uh, uh, relatively new uh, construction. So I think that uh, you are correct in your assessment. So I would like to motion for appeal number 253 for Rosario and Antoinette DeVico uh, to, to deny their requested value of $830,100. This is Harold. Any comments? Please second. I'll, I'll second it. The motion is seconded. I'll this is Kathleen. It. Sorry. I'll call a vote. Uh, raise your hand if you are in agreement to deny this appeal. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Alexis? Yes. Seven. Uh, Catherine, are you on? No. Uh, I don't believe she is. Paulette, yes. are you on? 
Yeah, I've I got see, my hand up. I see your hand, hand raised. Uh, the appeal is denied uh, with a vote of eight zero. Um, and therefore, the appeal is denied on appeal number 253. Thank you, board. And then the, uh, the adjacent property. Has, um, has a question. I'm sorry. My apologies. No. Yeah, I just a point of order. I'm thinking back to the last one when we were not in agreement. I think it's just better when 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 it's clear there's not a unanimous vote that perhaps pro call the roll and that's the best way for the vote to get into the record because I don't believe I think you said it was five three, but I don't know if you said who voted for and who voted against. So sometimes in those instances when you're not seeing, you know, a clear set of hands, it's probably better for the record just to read. I believe last time, you know, the five members voted in in favor. The three that were opposed were John, Peter, and myself. So just so that that's in the record, because if the, the public is listening, they're not seeing, so they they don't know who's raising their hands or not. So, and if Prue, you can help with the role on those, that would be, you know, you're the one who has to write down the minutes anyway. So <laughs> you, right. that might be helpful to move the process forward and to help you make sure you get it recorded correctly. So. Uh, this okay. is Harold. Thank you, Kathleen. And I, I think that a roll call vote would be in order to uh, assist with the recording of the minutes. Yes. All right, Ronnie, uh, stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, so across the street, which is appeal number 254, um, same property, except this is the actual parking lot and that's property address 2164 Fairfield Beach Road. Um, same owners, uh, Rosario Antoinette. Uh, the current value we have assessed at $66,600. The requested value of $55,000 was presented. Uh, the arguing case was um, not allowed to have structure because of the easement and it's only used for a parking car, it can't even put a shed. Um, now, if, I, if, if someone can confirm with me, we already have this accounted for as a non-buildable lot. Um, and so the easement and the shed debate, I believe, is already being accounted for in this property. Can someone else confirm that on the field card, we already have this evaluated to account for those two? No. <laughs> oh, Kathleen. Okay, I mute myself. I'm looking at the field. This is Kathleen. I'm looking at the field card now. Um, I do see it as a point when you look on the field card under the um, condition, you see a point yep. one condition factor in general. Um, I believe that is how the assessor's office is coding non buildable lots. Um, you know, on the creek side, the ones that are that are too small to own a house. So it looks like they have, you know, that adjustment, that condition factor in there. So, in other words, if it was buildable, it would be a 1. And then if there's some other hardships on the land, so in other words, he takes it down 90% to a point 1 and that's how he, that's how they're. You know, that's how they're valuing. For the most part, creek side properties. Um, and if there's other hardships on the property that might be adjusted in, you might see that in the notes. I'm just looking to see if there's anything in the notes. I see size proximity don't in a PC four. I believe that's the Creek side code for that area. Um, and as we all have heard that uh, vision when the cards got printed, the location adjustment figure. Uh, shows as a 1.0000, regardless of what the location adjustment was. So that dis that display of the one is incorrect. It should be 1 point something, but that the PC4 it didn't affect the ability for the for the formula to work. It just means that you know the description for what a PC4 is didn't show correctly. And he's getting the new cards uploaded hopefully in the next two to three weeks. So it doesn't mean that the math is wrong. You know, just that the, the description on the card is wrong. So, you know, the town's value is act, appears to be in line with how they typically value Creekside properties. I, I have a question. This is Paulette. What concerns me about the Creekside properties and the town assessing the value is they have the right to do that, of course, but 
Um, I don't understand. It's, to me, it's difficult because anybody on that side who comes with an appeal can't show comps except for their neighbors, which we don't like to use. These things don't sell. So they're not really marketable properties. So the, the market values, which we're trying to go on, really can't be established. Uh, so they're letting the town establish a market value, which isn't real because they're not buying it. So I guess I have, I, I don't know, I mean, I don't know how I, I don't know how to like rationalize it in my head, but this, this property went up 47% since 2015 in value, according to this new evaluation. I just don't think that that's marketable. I don't think, I don't think that's market value. I just don't think that, because these, these are unique properties. I don't know if talking to the assessor would help me understand it better, but I just don't see how something go up 47% when it has no market value at all. It's zero market value. So we're, we're relying on the assessor's office to be fair. I just don't really understand how they do it. That's all I'm saying. This, this is Harold. I, I do believe that this parcel does have market value because anyone who might purchase this home in the future would relish the fact that they have parking availability off of the road of Fairfield Beach Road uh, opposite their home. So there is value to the buyer who has that availability. That's true. So that goes with the other side of the street. If that house, those houses, when they're valued, these properties have been separated. So even though you do sell them together and it has value when you sell the house, if you're not selling the house, it really doesn't have any value. It's when you sell the house, it does. But for right now, looking at it as a separate piece of property, is it really 47% more valuable or 40, than it was five years ago? I doubt it, but I don't know. I, that's why I just don't really know what he did or how they, how they come to that. Why isn't it 30% more valuable or 80% more valuable? Where do they yes. come to this number? Yes, thank you, Paulette. Uh, uh, Kathleen has a comment. Uh, but this is Harold. I do think, again, it has to do with how the uh, uh, properties were uh, adjusted and formulated uh, across the town of Fairfield. And uh, that is what resulted in that assessment. Uh, Kathleen, do you have any comments on that? Um, this is Kathleen. I did just want to add, if you look at the field card, um, this piece, this particular parcel was actually purchased from the town of Fairfield in uh, January of 2017 for a sale price of $55,000. So they, um, um, that property was actually put out to bid. There were several different neighbors who were interested in the property, I believe, there, or that there was more than one party who wanted to buy it. And so they purchased this, this particular piece separate from their home, I believe, because, of, and I know the town, I'm sure the town didn't own the beachfront property. So this was an individual sale of a piece of Creekside property in 2017. And given that the market in the beach area is, you know, better than it was in 2017, um, and this was a publicly, you know, it wasn't on, I don't believe it went on MLS, but it was a publicly noticed, and they noticed the, the town noticed the neighbors that they were, in, you know, that they were selling it. Um, I, you know, for, to go from 55 to 66, you know, in between 2017 and now, I, um, I can see that as, you know, as a, as a, as a reasonable, you know, reasonable increase in the value of that property, given what the market has been like, you know, recently in the beach area. So yeah, and this I, I'm okay with that value. I'm sorry, John, you have a comment, Mr. Brownique? Yeah, this is John. Um, I do agree that with um with what Kathleen's saying that there ha there should be some time adjusted appreciation to that land. Um, and I think it would be safe to say that um a reasonable to think, and I think I'll let you you agreed as well, that if they were to sell this piece of land, they would also sell the house with it. Um, and that it would be packaged together. Um, I don't know if there would be an option. I'm just looking at the card, um, or I'm wondering if if a denial would be um, appropriate just to give the owners an opportunity to merge these two pieces of property together. I don't know if they can or can't since they're separate right now, um, and if there would be any benefit to doing so. Um, yes, this is Veronique. Um speaking on behalf of, of appeal number 254. Um, I would like to make a motion on this property. There's a couple of things going on with this property. The sales price was in 2017, and they're, they're requesting a value of that same sale price. 
the arguments made during this appeal was just because they didn't have a structure or they, they're not allowed to have a structure, but we are already accounting for that value. I do not believe it's unreasonable for us to have an appeal value of 66,600. So I would like to motion to deny this request of appeal number 254, property address 2164 Fairfield Beach Road. I'll second it. This is John. Drew, can you do the roll call vote, please? This is well, John. This, okay. this is John. I, I would just say that if you get an indication that it's a unanimous vote, then she doesn't need to call the roll. If you get an indication from the hand raising that it's not going to be a unanimous vote, then I would think we can call the roll just to speed things up. This is Harold. Yes, that would speed things up. So, uh, on the appeal on at the, on the table currently, uh, I'll ask for a hand raise. Uh, of all those in favor of denial. And then I'll well, raise raises her hand. I'm sorry, who was, who was that? Okay, speaking? I have seven. And then uh, Paulette, I, I don't see Paulette's hand up. And you won't see it. Okay. Can uh, Alexis so uh, on vote zero? in favor of the denial? Okay, who was that? Alexis Thanks. Harrison. Oh, okay. Sorry, Alexis. I thought you were okay. So we're going six, two, zero. No, I'm not agreeing. Why don't you, this is Kathleen? Um, so why don't you call the roll? Because I and I'm not sure that that's correct. I, can you, that you know, know, maybe you can, Rudy, Sorry, can you just restate the, the what the motion is on on the table, just so everybody's clear? Yes, of course. I'm, I mean, are we? Um, present this motion. So appeal number 254, uh, property address 2164 Fairfield Beach Road, Rosario and Antoinette DeVico. Uh, they're requesting a value of $55,000, uh, and we currently have it appraised at 66,600. I am motioning to deny this claim um, because of they're presenting a sales value of 2017 to justify the $55,000. And their motion was because they cannot have a structure on the easement, but we are already accounting for that. And so I am denying this appeal uh, for uh, $55,000. Okay. Do I second? Yes. Second. second. Uh, John, can you okay, state your name so, for the record? Yeah, John Spolier, I second the motion to deny the appeal. Okay, so Paulette. Yes. Oh, um, I don't. I'm, I'm no. I'm not denying the appeal. I'm. Uh, I'm voting in favor of the appellate. Okay. So, so you're this okay. is This is Lex Kathleen voting in favor of the appellate as well. Okay. Should I go through each person individually? This is Kathleen. Um, sure. So basically, since it's since it's a motion to deny, if you vote in favor, you're denying it. If you vote no, you're you're not you're voting not to deny it. That makes sense. And I, I yeah. Okay. So I called Paulette. Um, Kathleen. Yes. Alexis. No. Peter? Yes. Harold? Yes. Renique? Yes. John? Yes. Judith? Yes. Okay, and Catherine, are you on or not? I think she's okay, still so on. That's six. All right, so that's six and two in favor. Yes, six two zero since there were no abstentions, but yes. Yes. Anyone uh, this is Harold. Anyone want to go next? I'll I'll go next, uh, Harold. Yeah, this is this is Kathleen. Peter Peter had some of the beach as well. And Alexis does too, but she has to leave. So Peter, do you want her to do a few uh, I'm also yeah, and actually, Kathleen, I'm not see. I'm going through the scans right now, and I'm not seeing all the supplementary um, material that appellants have given me. 
Alexis, you're you're coming th uh, through the microphone a little bit harsh. Maybe you need to uh, remove it, uh, back it up a little bit, please. How, how's that? That's somewhat better. Thank okay. you. <laughs> not not one hundred percent. How's that? Yes. I just um, I had a question. I'm, I'm just looking for some of the cases that I had this week, and I don't see the additional materials that the um, applicant petitioners gave us in the in the documents. So I'm just a little concerned that we won't have a full view of some of the materials that they gave us. Sure, this is Kathleen. Can you give me the specific appeal numbers, and I'll check with um, the assessor's office. Yeah, he... I have to go through the detail, and I, I can do that. Okay, great. Is someone presenting a case or? Peter, Peter are you talking on mute? Yeah, okay. I, no, I thought uh, we were waiting for uh, Alexis. Okay. So um, I'm going to uh, present uh, appeal number 630. This is 939 Fairfield Beach Road. Um, uh, John and Lisa Fay are the owners. Okay, and um, the town has um, appraised their property at uh, 1,679,300. They're asking for a reduction down to 1 million uh, 470,000. Uh, and, um, so they presented, uh, um, several, several comps. These are all, um, with sales that were, uh, outside of the, um, time period, um, 10, uh, or 1495, uh, Fairfield beach road. That was, uh, a sale, uh, from, uh, 530 to 19, 2019. All right. Um, another sale from 21 uh, for um, 2123 Fairfield Beach Road, uh, which was um, the uh, that was from um, April of uh, 2018. All right. Um, and these all uh, that was a comp actually. They presented a um, appraisal by the bank that that was a comp that was used. And they bought their home in 2019. Actually, they bought their home in uh, February of 2019. I think it went to contract in January, but uh, February of 2019 um, was the close for 1.3. They bought it for 1.3 uh, million. And uh, um, they also have uh, another comp of at 1157 Fairfield Beach Road. Again, this is a, a uh, February of 2019 um, sale and uh, another one uh, that is location wise close uh, um, close to them I mean be, you know most many of the at least uh, the 223 and um, 2123 and another one are are much further down on the you know that that at the end of the peninsula there um and uh 971 uh fairfield beach road which um was also at uh, june 2018 uh sale um I, you know i i don't think uh, i mean one of the big um or one of the themes of the arguments for a reduction uh that stood out to me was that that they um, are these are this home is located next to um, a, you know several uh, uh, college rental properties and um, that uh, you know that's you know obviously there are some issues with that particular kind of situation they provided a map that you know pointed out the proximity of those college rentals uh, to their to their home, um, and um, you know, uh, they brought up some other things about you know the comparison between you know some of these properties 
that uh, they use the comps, um, you know, that their home does not have a garage. Uh, it is raised, but I guess it's not raised, you know, to what would be considered FEMA compliant. Um, you know, I, I, that's what that's what was uh, stated. Um, but uh, I'm I'm um, I'm inclined to uh, deny this because I, I really, um, you know, the the I just don't think they had. I don't think they had. You know, they didn't have sales that would you know show that this was. Um, this new number uh, or the town's number is um, off, and uh, you know they they felt that um, um, there, was, there was a lot of talk about the the um, uh, the uh, the beach rentals, you know, being being an issue for them. Um, yes, uh, Renee. Um, yes, thank you. This is Ronique speaking. Um, I actually have a question for Paulette on this property, Paul, on this property, because they did attach a comparable, and I'm just on the appraisal report, and I'm just curious if it actually is a true comparable. And looking at what second comparable sale they provided for 971 Fairfield Beach Road. Is that a comparable property that is your expertise? Um, this, this is Paulette. It's comparable property for an appraiser. Here's why. The, they, this has, this is a bigger house. It looks like, well, it has, no, it's a little bit bigger, but it has more rooms. It's got four baths, three bedrooms. The other one, the subject property has only five rooms, two bedrooms, and two and a half baths. So, yes, you can use, they use it um, because they have the formulas that they learned that are approved by the, whatever their organization they belong to that allows them to make adjustments based on what they see because nothing's ever it's very hard to get two identical properties so they look like they made some adjustments down here and minus thirty thousand here minus 20 there plus 10 plus one for the fireplace to get the price to make to, make, to try to make a value that will work for the subject property it's just a give and take kind of thing so yes this is a comparable property also they, the, the appraiser mentioned uh, one of those i don't know the on the uniform appraisal report we typed everything in it talks about the sales being over six months out of the period. It says that because there's a limited number of truly comparable sales, the subject properties used in the subject property necessitated the use of sales in excess of six months. So he recognizes that these are not comps within the period that we're looking at, but there weren't any that were good enough to use. So he had to go outside of that, that our time frame. So even though they were from a different year, he managed to make them work to try to come up with a value. Um, so I, I think I think those comps are okay. I'm not. I wouldn't really put much weight into the comp that's on Fern Street because it's not on the water. Okay, and it's not it's not in the water area. I mean that's a that may be in the neighborhood that Ross designed that he created or invented, but it has nothing to do with properties on Fairfield Beach Road. So I wouldn't even look at that as being involved in this. Thing. I just put it aside. And just work with the ones that are on Fairfield Beach Road. And as far as the the, the kid the students, I know the public won't be happy to hear me say this, but when you purchase a home on Fairfield Beach Road, I don't think there's anybody out there who doesn't know that the students are there. And so I don't think it's fair to go back and use that as a problem that you that, that, that values your property when you knew all along they were there. So that that's that's that has nothing to do with it either. I don't I don't consider that when I consider them. You know they're there, you bought it, now you're trying to say it's a reason why it's not valuable. It is that has nothing to do with it. Every almost every house like that is affected by the students down there. So I just look at Thank the you. Yeah, that comp is okay. And based on what I see, you know, what they paid for it and what these comps are, personally, I would agree that this is, I would agree with the appellate and grant the appeal. That's just me. Thank they provide you. a fair I, appraisal. We have no reason to, the comps are fair. We have no reason to, to say that the appraiser is wrong. And I think we have to be careful about that, saying that they're wrong. When we're not, we're not, any, we're, we're less educated about this than they are. And as long as the comps are reasonable, and I think we have to say that he made his case. That's all. Um, well, I, I don't, I will go ahead, Kathleen. Sure, I just kind of have two points. One is that um, the comps are old. And I think, again, we're waiting for all of the sales data that Ross is just a <laughs> little hesitant to release without 
uh, you know, approval from the, it's F liable anyway, but uh, from the town attorney that it's okay to post it on the website. Um, that will help confirm, you know, that there are no other sales in the Fairfield Beach area that are comparable to this or not. Um, but given that one, the comp and the price that's being used from the comp is from 2018. You know, we all know that COVID has affected the market and the market's very strong down there. We're trying to get to October 2020. Um, the other thing I would point out is that the town has that comp that even though it was a 2018 sale, unless I'm looking at it, the wrong property, the town now has that comp valued at 1,629,600, not at 1,470,000, which is what the appellant is you know, requesting to go to. So it appears that, I mean, not that we always try to look at neighbor to neighbor, but if you know, we're trying to say, did the town do a good job in the beach area, you know, to say that the comp property is at 1,629, you know, this one's at 1,679, you know, absent any 2020 sales data in the beach area presented any new, you know, and, and using comps that are on Fern Street, which is not the neighborhood 66, which is Fairfield Beach Road. I just wanted to point out, you know, that that person's not at that price anymore. The town has them up. This is Paulette. I agree. Like I said, Fern Street, not, not a good comp. Throw it out. We have two others. Here's my concern. I keep hearing over and over again that we're looking at, we're trying to get to October, 2020. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm not. I'm looking at the period that we're supposed to be looking at. This thing about we have to, it doesn't make a difference what happened in October 1st. It have, makes a difference what happened through the entire period. We don't need to get to October 1st pricing. The other thing is if Mr. Mr. Murray is going to be allowed to bring us information, which I, I complained about right along, then I think we should have Mr. Fay come back and give us more comps because after all, why shouldn't he get a second chance? It's getting ridiculous. The town just can't keep doing things and giving us things. And, we, and if they give it to us, that's fine. They have the right to give it to us. We shouldn't be taking it. They don't have another, they don't have the right to come back with more comps. They had their chance. If we want to vote no, because of what's in front of us, fine, whatever the, whatever the majority is. We shouldn't be allowing them to come back with more information unless we're going to let Mr. Fay come back and give us more comps. And I do hope Mr. Fay is listening. He probably is. What, this is ridiculous. This is Harold. Harold. What information was... This is Harold. I, I would like to say that uh, I'm being echoed, I think. Uh, I would like to say that Mr. Murray, the uh, town of uh, Fairfield Assessor, is not on the line with us, and he did not provide us any additional comps. We're looking at the information that was provided by the appellate only. Yes, but we, I just heard Kathleen say that we're waiting for that information. I'm not waiting for it because we shouldn't have it. Well, this is I, Kathleen. I, the, the data is on the data is in vision. The sales are in vision uh, open to the public. The sales data is updated. I believe weekly in vision. So, I mean, we, it, it has been available to us. What we don't have from Mr. Fazio is his kind of comments because we know from his presentations that he has taken a very close look at the beach area and that he and Ross have spent a lot of time. You know, trying to figure out which properties are just beach side, who has beach, who has creek, who has creek only to try. You know, he said that he, you know, in coming up with his values, he divided the Fairfield Beach Road into three areas because he saw the different sales tending to trend one way or the other. So it's not that the data isn't out there. He had just provided his comments on particular properties and we, we don't, you know, we don't. We don't have that yet, but it's mostly, you know, the MLS data um, and, and, you know, the sales data, like I said, is in vision. It's just the MLS data that we have not been given, you know, the ability to see, but he used that MLS data when he came up with his model, which is, I guess, part of his job as the, you know, as, as the appraiser, the, the hired appraiser for the town is to use as much data as he can. So he's a member of MLS, he can use that in his process. And again, they use it to develop the model, right? The sales data to use the model, to develop the model. So, um, and I just wanna point out too that, you know, we sort of said this the other night, but, you know, this is year one of a five-year reval. And so, 
you know, if we try to figure out what somebody's sale price on their house should have been, we could be doing them a disservice by reducing them to a, an amount that may not be sufficient for their case. So if we give them the opportunity to, you know, review and spend more time, bring us more, more comps and make their case next year, they can be reduced for four more years. And that's a long time. If we reduce them, their only option is to go to court and then they have to have lawyer, you know, it just gets and sue the town. And that's, that's a complicated process. So I just feel like sometimes we need to stay, you know, we need to keep that in mind when we're making decisions that we don't want to, you know, if they didn't present a great case of current data that we don't also want to, we don't want to hurt them and we want them to have the opportunity to, you know, and they can go to court this year too. If that's their goal, they certainly can take us to court on our, on a denial or, a, you know, a partial, but they'd have to do it this year. They can't, you know, they need, they need to file within either 30 or 60 days that they want to go to court. So, um, this is Sorry, this is Veronique. Uh, Peter, if you can turn down the volume on your end or mute when when someone talks, because we're hearing echoes, and I don't, and I just want to make sure the message is just cleared. Sorry, side note. Thank you, Veronique. This is Paulette. I, I understand. I get. I hear what you're saying, Kathleen, and in some way, I agree with some of it. But here's the thing: I can't. I can't guarantee that they're going to get a better response or a better answer if they wait a year. They're here now. And if we need access to the MLS, Judy and I would be happy to provide it. We don't need to wait for him to come with his, his comps from the MLS now. He had his chance. The appellate had their chance. They don't get to come back with more information. He shouldn't either. The information is out there for us to see. So why don't we see it? We don't need him to do it. I think that we, we I think, and I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. I'm very uncomfortable with how we respond and how we lean on the assessor and Mr. Fazio for their opinions. They gave us their work. We are, we are tasked with the we our task is to look at it and decide whether or not we agree or disagree with it based on what we have not what they're going to give us why don't we just like i said if they're going to come with something then i think mr fay should come with them more information maybe he didn't understand and give us the right information there's more information out there for him too this is ridiculous we we it sounds like to me what we're doing is just parroting what the what the assessor and mr fazio want 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 it and that's what we're doing with most of these and it makes me very uncomfortable it aggravates me these people deserve a fair chance and letting them come letting them come second bite of the apple is not a fair chance and no they aren't this we have to be fair to everybody so if we're going to be fair to everybody let's give them all a second chance and by the way just a little while ago we, we looked at a value at two, 2017 and thought that was fine to make a decision on now this man has something from 2018 from an appraiser with adjustments which is how it's done and and we won't we won't we won't consider that I'm not sure what we're doing. We seem to change the rules as to, to benefit the town whenever it's convenient. Okay, so I, I would just want to say, you know, very state for the record that there, I, I'm not, I'm not using any additional information that was provided by the assessors. This is all the stuff that was in the record. So I, I just want to move on from that. You know, the only other thing I would just say in terms of looking at this uh, property and the the comp that I think is really most relevant is 971 in terms of its location. Um, you know, the, the value of the land is very similar um, uh, between these two properties. Really, it's the house that's, um, uh, you know, a difference between those two, um, those comps. And, you know, I mean, just, a, just again, not being a realtor, not being an appraiser, looking at it, you know, you see that the uh, subject property um, is, you know, somewhat raised, uh, maybe not FEMA compliant, but raised up. And uh, it's probably uh, has a much you know, uh, better, uh, you know, view, uh, water, you know, water view versus the other property, which is a long, low house um, that goes, you know, stretches throughout the uh, the property. So, you know, why that's the difference, I don't know, but that's what it indicates that the, the you know, building values you know, less on the 971 versus the subject property. So my, you know, to move forward here, um, I'm um, uh, making a motion to deny this appeal. Um, so that's, you know, appeal number 630 for uh, 939 Fairfield Beach Road. Um, I'm uh, making a motion to um, deny that appeal. This is Harold. Do we have a second? This is Kathleen. I'll second it. We have a second. 
Uh, by a show of hands, can we show how many are denials? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, Alexis, are you in favor of denial, Alexis? Favor of denial. You are not in favor, okay. And Judy, are you in favor of denial? Uh, no, I'm not. And Paulette, are you in favor of denial? Absolutely not. All right. Uh, do we need a roll call vote? I have five, three, zero. I believe that is correct unless anyone objects. All right, the vote on this uh, appeal is five in favor of denial, three opposed. We can move on to the next. Peter, do you have another? Yeah, I think Alexis, I thought she had to leave. Maybe she has something before she goes. Yes, yeah, so no, you know, I'm, well, I think I mentioned this that I'm missing information from the scan documents that are on the website, and I want to, you know, rectify that before I state um, the appeals that I have. So I will hold off right now. Alexis, this is Harold. Can, uh, are you are you uh, checking the grant list uh, for scanned in documentation? I am on the website and information that I got a lot of information from appellants when I heard them and they're not being represented in, in the scan documents. Okay. Thank you. Uh, then we'll move back to Peter. Oops, sure. Um, Give me one second, please. And if you're not ready, Peter, I have one, but I mean, it was up totally up to you. I've already presented quite a bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so this, this is appeal. This is appeal number uh, two two seven, um, which is uh, eighteen ten Fairfield Beach Road, Kenneth and uh, Elizabeth Davy. Um, <laughs> pardon me. This uh, so this is uh, the appellant on there. Um, on their application, and I, you know, so I think this was has been uh, went through an informal and had an adjustment in informal. But on their application, they had the town asking uh, for a value, uh, uh, appraising at a value of one million six hundred and fifty thousand six hundred. And um, I'm seeing on the vision card that it's. Uh, Valued at one million five hundred and thirty-eight thousand four hundred. Okay, um, and again, the appellant originally originally asked on their application for a reduction to one million two hundred sixty-one thousand um, one hundred ninety-seven. Uh, but then, in in the uh, hearing, they um, asked to modify that down to one million one hundred and seventy-three thousand four hundred ninety. Right. This was a home um, that was purchased um, in uh, 7, 7 16 of 2019. Okay. Um, the, so there, they provided some comps, um, which are all this is the creek, this is the creek side home. And the comps, um, uh, two of the comps that they provided, um, 1504. Um, and 1800 Fairfield Beach Road um, 
are, are both uh, comps that they provided. Um, I'll, I'll get back to that in one minute. And then they also provided a comp for the beach side, all right, which was 1883 Fairfield Road. And the um, the thing about this piece of land, and there was there was the um, in the record the um, appellant um, contacted after contacted the assessor's office <laughs> after the hearing, and you know said that you know he saw that the um, code for the home was as a beach side home. Um, and so was, you know, inquiring about that. And the assessor did reply that because there is actually a strip of land that is um, owned by this, that is part of this property that actually gives them beach access. Um, uh, that's what the difference is, um, you know, why, they, why it was coded differently. And so, you know, I mean, it does, you know, there is, there is a strip of land that, you know, actually allows them to have beach um, access, even though they are, you know, on the creek side of the, of the road. Um, so, you know, looking at that, I mean, I, you know, um, you know, I, I just, I mean, I think that's, you know, there, there's really the difference. I mean, the value of that home, you know, um, you know, beachside versus creekside without uh, access. Um, I mean, I think is shown in those two comps that they provided in 1504, um, and, which, you know, was a sale date of 11 17, um, 2017. And then the other one was a sale date of, you know, 2015. So, you know, there's, those are, you know, old sales. Um, so, you know, my my inclination is to deny this um, appeal. I don't think they I don't think they showed, you know, um, uh, you know the the one comp that they uh, provided on the beach side that actually I think you know does not help their um, does not help their uh, their case here. I mean, they did give a lot of information in terms of you know square footage comparisons. So I'm, I don't want to. Deny. I mean, they did a lot of work in terms of presenting um, their case. They, you know, um, um, you know, provided uh, about you know improvements, in the difference between their, you know, their home and, and this eight, the uh, one at 1800. 1800 has been, you know, um, is is a fairly new construction. Uh, if that's my understanding, um, but. The, um, you know, the comparisons, you know, out, you know being larger, wise, larger. Um, I just didn't think they made a good enough case uh, based on that. So now I, I will say, I, you know, just to go to uh, Paulette's point, just to, you know, this this information was given, was shared, although that information was not shared with me, which, I, you know, I, I suppose if I had taken a look at the, the GSI um, of this property, I would have seen that there was, um, you know, access to the beach here. So that was not, you know, mentioned during the hearing, you know. Um, so, anybody have any questions? Um, I don't actually have this, Paul. I don't actually have a question, um, but I will say this: I'm, I understand what you're saying, but I'm looking at it from a different angle, and the angle I'm looking at it from is that. There seems to be something in here from uh, from Ross explaining that they he coded them um, as a FB8 <coughs> code for beachside, not creekside. Now I don't know what those codes mean because again, when I asked, I was ignored, so I have no idea if this is true or not. I'm just going on what they're telling me. So they may not, you you know, may feel that they may not have proved their case. However, <coughs> they're not beachside, and having access to the beach is a great thing and it is very valuable, but it's not the same value as being beachside. So this needs to, I think we need to, as much as I would say, don't talk to Mr. Murray, I think, or to Ross, I think that we need to discuss with him, is there, is there a, should there be a separate code for somebody that has access? Because that does add value, but not, not the same value as being beachside. I mean, the whole, the whole thing of being beachside is, you know, the water view, the sand, they, they don't have this. So I, I think that there's, there was a state, mistake made in the coding. I think we should table it until we can discuss with him or 
I'm trying to be nice about it. I could say he didn't make his case because he can't tell me why he coded them as beachside when they're not. Right. Well, he did. He did, Paul. I'll just you know point out to one other piece of information. He he did say that there was a 10 percent uh, reduction on the land due to the fact that it was not directly on the beach side. 10 percent is not enough. Okay. Well, do you really right. think? Think about it. Think about it. If you own the house, if you own that house, and you don't have you don't have beach front, okay. Do you really think that your land, your your site is worth only 10% less than the person who smacked right on the beach? I don't think so. I think it's more than that. So uh, this is call. Judy Zablack. Oh, uh, it's Judy Zablack. By the way, Paula is 100% correct. You can't, I don't know why, uh, like a little strip of land that gives you access to the uh, beach, that doesn't enable you to have the same type of property value. You're not going to have the same property value as you would on the creek. There's there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And to just reduce it by it, it just was coded incorrectly. And uh, it's it's improper. It's improperly coded and it shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't be valued as such. Period. It's not gonna it can't be it can't be sold at the same price as actual beachfront with uh, with water views, period. Plus the other but, but, but don't don't you as realtors, don't you as realtors put it on the market saying, stating that it has beach access? Yeah, beach access. Yeah, exactly. uh, yeah beach access as opposed to beach view is completely different. Well, you're, you're, you're right, but I mean, it's something that you, you, you know, that goes into the value of the home um, when there is yeah. beach access, right? As opposed to having right. to, you know, walk down the road to the public beach, you know, being able to walk your own path down to the beach is the value. Well, there is, there's definitely a value, and I had said that there is a value. But my point is, if you have to prove a case, they're proving that it shouldn't be the same value as a house that's beachfront. Remember, they have access to the beach, but we don't really know the whole story unless they told you. What do they do when they get to the beach? They can sit where? Anywhere, a little strip? It's not like when you live on the, on the beach where you have access to having a party there, having people on the sand, enjoying the whole, the whole thing that you paid for, the beach access. I don't think they have that, but then I'm only guessing. But again, if we're trying, if we're saying that people have to prove their case, these people proved that they are not beachside or beachfront. Mr. Ross did not. He did not prove it. He says they're being coded as beachfront and they are not beachfront. They're alone. Never mind. And plus the value, as Judy stated, this is just not right. This isn't right. And by the way, where did he get this? This? How did he do these codes? That's the other thing. Is there something? I don't know what the rules of his job are. Is this what he's supposed to be supposed to code everything and just give him a value? I don't really know. And if he had explained that to me, I might be more inclined to agree that maybe it's maybe maybe there's something else we could do. But I, since I don't have information, I'm only going on what I have. It's not beachfront, and therefore I'm not gonna. I cannot deny these people any relief because he made a mistake. Uh, this is this is Harold. I'd like to make a comment. Uh, I, looking at the vision card, I see that the appraised value. Uh, that the town has for this property is $1,538,400, which differs from what is on the petition card. And I don't know how that shall affect a decision, uh, but perhaps the petition card should reflect what the actual town's appraised value is. And that was what, Harold? I didn't hear one five what? One million five hundred and thirty eight thousand four hundred and they're looking for a value of one two six one one nine no, they, seven. They, okay. they amended it to one million one hundred and seventy three four ninety okay so that's what they're looking for okay okay well like i said uh, the numbers need to be correct for the record but i don't that doesn't change my decision or my 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 thought thinking on it it is not beachfront it is not worth one million five hundred thousand. If that's what it, it's not, it's not worth it. This is John. This this is John. I'm looking at the submitted uh, field card with this. Um, and it looks like the land has been broken out into two parcels within the field card. Here. Um, and it seems that there is 5,000 square feet, um, which is, I think, what what Ross is talking about with the condition of 0. 0.9. Uh, 
Um, I'm guessing that that's the beachfront or the beach side, I should say. Um, and then we have a 1.12 acreage, um, which is also broken out, and they do have different zones associated with them. So I, I, I guess from my point of view as a layperson here, is it looks like we've we have split the. Or, or the card and the valuation has been split out between the two parcels of property, even though it's joined under one field card. So there has been some some semblance of it, at least in in my opinion. And this is Harold again. Uh, I would like to also point out that it appears that the appellant uh, did go uh, in front of the revaluation company for an informal hearing and got a uh, reduction uh, at that time of, well, approximately, what, $18,000? Is that what I'm calculating here? And the, the other comment is that this house was purchased in July of 2019 for one million five hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars, which was less than the uh, previous sale price in two thousand and five of one million six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So it appears that it has been holding value. Thank you. This is Kathleen. Hi, here. Uh, yes, I see. I had just noticed that on the field card as well that they purchased it in July of 2019. I wrote down that they paid 1,520,000 dollars for it in the summer. So I'm not again. So I looked back to see why are they asking for a million one when they paid a million five last, you know, in 2019. And again, it, it's it's because my neighbor is low. I should be low argument that you know or petition that we tend to see when people are looking at their neighbors and comparing it to themselves and again it's i'm not saying that the neighbor isn't too low and perhaps we should consider at some point when we're done looking at these to raise the neighbor because perhaps the neighbor is well under and that is not fair to everybody else if people aren't paying you know a reasonable within some reasonable range of the fair value we know you know, not everyone's going to be spot on for market value. Some people are going to be over, some are going to be under. But if there's an egregiously wrong property that's appraised at a million one, and this appellant thinks they're very similar, and he's at a million five and he paid a million five, maybe the neighbor's wrong and not him. You know, so we don't, our job isn't to make everybody like their neighbor. Our job, I believe, is to, you know, figure out what what is fair for their <coughs> property. And then perhaps we can go back and look at other ones that may be under for some reason. Um, but um, given that they paid a million five, you know, a, a year and a half ago, and we don't believe the beach has gone down since then, I don't think that a million five thirty eight is unreasonable, given that they paid a million five twenty for it. And they didn't say, you know, it had all these things terrible about it that we you know that was not that is not known to the town. So Harold Paul, I have a comment. Um, you know, I I understand about him paying that. Normally I'd be the one to say, well, that's what they paid for. But this isn't what I'm not concerned. I'm not so concerned about that. I'm concerned about that it's miscoded and how many others are. So I would say, I don't know that we should decide on this. Maybe we should talk to Ross and ask him to change the code. And then what's the value then? That's the real value. I want to see the code change and reflected of what his value really is, what the town says his value really is when he's not coded as beachfront. I'm going to look at this again, considering what he paid for it, if he's coded properly. If not, then I'm punishing the town by saying it's the wrong code, he's not beachfront. I'm not I'm not siding with the town. They have to be well, this is Harold. I think Judy Sayblack has a comment. Yeah, Judy. yeah, and you know what? I was actually I'm th I'm listening to all of this. He bought it for a million five, but it's coded incorrectly, and I have a problem with that. I have a just yeah, like Paulette. I you know, and because it's coded incorrectly, I I couldn't 
I can't do anything with this. I can't do anything with this. It needs to be done properly. I'll hear it again. I'm like absolutely in the same sentiments with Paulette on this. It's important. Uh, this is Harold. I think in fairness to the appellate, uh, we can table this. Uh, I mean, it's it's certainly the presenter's prerogative to request that. Um, and we can ask the uh, assessor's office to look at the coding and we can revisit this at another time. That is my suggestion. Any other comments? Yeah. Kathleen has a comment. Yeah. Uh, this is Kathleen. I was just going to say yes. So that's when Rod, that's why I, you know I said unless there's some clear cut ones on the beach, perhaps you know we do want to wait till the assessor is available to answer coding questions on these properties. Um, I'm not saying that he that it's incorrect because they seem to have come up with a good value. You know, at the end of the day, the model seemed to give them a sales a price that's accurate with what, pretty close to what they paid for it. So, um, you know, whether the code, you know, is the coding wrong? I don't know. And I agree with you. We should get an explanation as to this property. Um, and a lot of these ones where there's the creek in the house and the sale price sometimes is all in one of the properties. So you can't use it as a comp. You know, if the creek, if the creek price is all in the beach price, the beach price is going to be inflated because it in the sale price in the beach is going to be inflated. Right? But in this case, he paid, I'm assuming this, you know, what he paid here is for is for this as well as for the beach access piece. But I think some clarification from Ross is is more than appropriate. And that's why, you know, he giving us a little bit better understanding, you know, they they did spend a significant amount of time in the Fairfield Beach area really looking at houses that have property on both the beach and the creek side. So I would just say before we know it's wrong, let's make sure we understand what the costs this, are. That's all. This is this is Harold. Yes. And there's no way for us to know it was if it was coded differently prior to this evaluation. So I think we can leave it uh to the assessor's office to give us clarification of the coding. Paulette, did you have a comment? Yes, I agree with that. I think that we should put it off until we can get clarification from the assessor's office. I, I agree with that. This is Harold. I agree. Judy, did you have a comment? No, uh, no, I, I think we should table this and get more information. Uh, Peter, it's your decision. Uh, sure. Yeah, we could, we could table it. I mean, I, 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 you know, I don't think that there, I don't want to say that there's error here. I just think it's how it, it's been coded that there was injustice, but I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to, to wait. Uh, you know, for just further clarification of of that. All right. This is Harold. Then I think that there's no further discussion needed on on this appeal presently. Uh, this Kathleen, is Kathleen. Do you, do you was, was there? Did you ever make a motion or approve? Did Peter make a motion that he needs to withdraw? We never made a motion. No, I don't. No, there was so. no motion. I just have no action taken. Perfect. Yes. Good discussion. Yeah. Thank you. This is Harold. So. Um, Harold, I'd like to just talk about, and, and it, it sounds like we probably, for this next, uh, the next two appeals, we probably should um, uh, wait for this clarification. So, um, the, the, the next two that I was going to present, because they're a similar type of issue, uh, just happens to be uh, an old damn road home that has access to Fairfield Beach. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I don't want to. Uh, you know, uh, I guess we should just wait until we get that clarification of how that works. Uh, this is Harold. Uh, Peter, you have the option to either uh, bring up the appeal and then uh, say that you want to hold off discussion on this until we get further clarification, or we can, you can skip to one that you would like to do next. Yeah. Well, if, if I mean, I could just put it out, put it out. To, um, to to the group just so we have an idea of what we're talking about, and then when we get the clarification about, um, you know, about the the coding, although, you know, I don't have any particular information about the coding here. But this is a this is a PL seventy one, and just give me one second here. A PL seventy one and seventy two. They go. They really go together. Okay, um, and this is, let me just get that up as well. 
And while he's pulling that up, I have a question for the group for logistics for today. Um, I do see that we had on the agenda to look at South Pine neighborhood, Southport Reef, Sherman, um, within the time um, after these appeals, would you like to still stay in the beach area or would you like to move or move over to the other neighborhood? Um, this is Harold. I, I will defer to Kathleen to uh, make a decision as to how we can efficiently cover the neighborhoods. Can we all decide or is it up to one person? Uh, if I could just, because I, I have uh, presentations for the South Pine Creek neighborhood, and uh, yes, I think that is for everybody or whoever. Uh, it's Catherine Gift, by the way, and um, I jumped off because I had not heard any of the Fairfield Beach uh, appeals and thought I would be better used my time, but I have heard, I believe we have 12 total appeals for the South Pine Creek neighborhood. I'm ready to present on six of them. Um, and I believe Kathleen Griffin, who has done an amazing job as secretary of doing all this organization, may have another four. I also have two that have not have been rescheduled. Um, but to Ronique's point, um, I certainly don't want to take away from people who are scheduled to present on Fairfield Beach. And I think it's great to have the, uh, the neighborhoods presented so that you know what the issues are and uh, what the concerns going forward are. So um, I just want to factor in that I am. I am now available until our end time, and I can present on half six of the uh, appeals. And I would like to um, to present them as a as a total, you know, to give some background. Present each individually, of course, but um, I think having the background of what their concerns are as a neighborhood would be uh, beneficial to present them one after the other in, in a package, quote unquote. This is John. Um, I, I think we're struggling here with Fairfield Beach properties right now without having Ross and his uh, knowledge to help explain things at the moment. So um, I'm thinking that uh, without Ross here, we're going to be spinning our wheels a little bit more to help guide us with understanding the field card and how things were done. Yeah, and I do believe that just we have so many properties to be looked at for South Pine, Southport Reef, Sherman. I mean, I, I, I think it's, and I think it's reasonable to move on to the other neighborhoods, but that's just me speaking and, and Kathleen, yes. if you have any input on that. This is Kathleen. I, the only, I, I agree with everybody. I think we spent a lot of time. We can certainly move on. The only condo that I would, the only comment I would make would be that, uh, Alexis, uh, Ronique and, uh, Who's the third? Peter are the ones who, you know, have had the most of the Fairfield Beach. So that when we do bring it up again, it might be helpful that we have all three of you on that particular night, if that makes sense with everybody. So, you know, you've you you've been hearing the 66 appeals between the 20 of you. I think Judy had a condo on Fairfield Beach down there as well. So you know, it's just helpful to have the others in the room because you're all kind of looking at the same comparables and, you know, studying. So that would be my only comment as we put it off, but also to make sure that Ross is available. So perhaps we can all take a second look at our deliberation availability, even if it's a couple hours here and there and figure out, you know, how we can make that work. You know, given that some people still have hearings at night, you know, we've been trying to do some hearing and some deliberation to get through the month, but I, I agree with, you know, at least waiting for Ross as, as a good idea. I don't think we need to wait for Ross uh, for the condo that I have. Okay, and uh, if there's no objection, I'd like to at least present that to everybody. Would that be okay? Thanks. This is Harold, yes. I will to hear it. Great. Go ahead. Thank you very much. This is uh, appeal number 493, the property's, uh, property owner's name is J James Wright. The address is at 749 Fairfield Beach Road. It's a 1,566 square foot condo. It's waterfront, there's four rooms, two bedrooms, two baths. This is an, in, a really interesting property because apparently, if I look back on this, um, it's for some reason, whatever algorithm is being used to value this property is improper, in my opinion. 
And the reason why is because we look at the 2015 valuation and that was way off the charts. So he did appeal that and uh, that, was, that was changed. Uh, this also is way off the charts. So we are, uh, when we look at a few sales, let me just look at the numbers again. So he's looking at uh, the value again, uh, the, the town's value is 1,191,700. The appellant's uh, opinion of fair, fair market value is 861.3. So here's the here's the weird thing for me. I think the 861.3 is too low. I think the 1,191.7 is too high. Okay. Um, so I would say a partial reduction, but definitely it's, you know, it's going to sell over or it would have sold more than 861.3 over at, at October 1 of 2020. So I would say based upon uh, the comparables, and if you guys are looking at anything, let me just get to it on here. And I'm moving this because, is, yes, go ahead. This is John. Um, I'm looking at the comparable sales that were submitted right. here. Um, with the sales price, it looks like there were three comparable sales, except for one of them was in 2018. We have a January 2020 and a November 2020. Um, are these, do you know off the top of your head, or was it mentioned if the 781 Fairfield Beach Road and the 1240 Beach Road, are those also condos? Oh, one, I believe is. Um, well, I'm going to look on the M. I can look on the MLS. I kept it. I don't believe. And then also with the two comps that, uh, again, 781 Fairfield Beach Road and 1240 Fairfield Beach Road, um, one looks to be built in 1924. The other looks to be built in 1900 is looks like a, an estimate. Um, while the square footage seems to be the same, bathrooms are about the same, bedrooms are the same. Um, the appellant does have one less room. Um, but I guess the appellant w is a 2012, and I think from the field card notes and improvements, it looks like that uh, the, uh, in 2013 it was demoed and built, rebuilt in 2014. Um, so I have some, so I guess I have some concerns here. Um, about the comps, the sale comps, if they are condo to condo, also the age of the buildings um, of the two that I'm considering here, if they are correct. Or, well, um, first of all, remember, this is 1,566 square feet also. Yep. yep. Right. And the other ones are less in square feet. The, the 781 Fairfield Beach Road right. and the 1240 Beach Road are also less. Mm -hmm. um, this is Roni Patel. Um, I have um, a comment on this property. Um, so if we're not going to judge from the fair market value of the appellant's opinion, um, I would ask if there is going to be a presentation for a reduction, then I would like to see compelling information as to why that number is derived. Because first off, we're not appraisers, and I just want to make sure that we do have a solid number with verifiable information from the appellant and not just coming up with a figure because we may be doing a disservice to the appellant by creating a number and then them not being able to reduce it for the following year or contest it. This is, this is Harold. I would, I would, this is Harold. I would also like to point out that this appellant did uh, uh, get an adjustment from Correct. Uh, possibly uh, the informal hearing of uh, it looks like approximately seventy five thousand dollars, shall I say, or seventy three thousand. Right. So does that mean that with the price that's on the the the, the appraised? I'm going to try to get that page again. The appraised value 
that, that's showing the town value that's showing on the application, that's after a 70 something thousand dollar reduction? Uh, the appraised value equates to the current uh, assessed value, yes. Uh, so we're so on statement D where it says appellate's opinion of value is 861,300. And then the town's value is 1191,700. That 1191,700, is that the value after he got his reduction? I guess I just want to make clear. Correct. Oh my God. So we got $70,000. Oh, okay. I understand now. I'm good. Yes, the assessed value that that number is based on is uh, $834,190. Divide that by 0. 0.7 gives you the 1191700. Okay. Um, I don't know if everybody's familiar with this, but this property is located in a condominium, a little, a little condominium complex called Lantern Point. Lantern Point is no one, nobody lives there full time. It's inhabited by Fairfield University students during the school term. So it's different. You're not, it's very hard to find comps because it's its own little community within Fairfield Beach Road. Um, there are other condo comps. There's one next door to what I forgot what the name of that one is. Same, same situation. Um, but they may, they may not have sold anything lately. These, tend, these properties tend not to transfer because people keep them forever as rental properties and they use them in the summer for themselves and their family or they rent them mostly for themselves. So we're going to find, we're going to have trouble finding exact comps, comps in the exact locations. One of them though, 740, what was it, 749 or 780 something, Fairfield Beach Road, I'm going back to the- 781. Appraisal. 781, I'm trying to find the appraisal real fast. That would be in that community. Okay, so I would look heavily at that one because that is down the little lane from this house. Um, so 781. <laughs> This is John. So 781 Fairfield Beach Road, you believe, is in the same complex? 787 Fairfield Beach Road, I think it is. That's what's on okay. the appraiser. Yeah, that's comp okay. one. I did not so scroll down. I would also comment, this is Harold, I would like to also comment on the card. Uh, the sale, uh, the last sale uh, to Mr. Wright of uh, August 2019 appears to be coded as an unqualified sale. So I, I don't know if that has a fact, uh, any bearing on I, the pricing. I, I guess it would. And also, if um, this is John, I just want to state that it looks like the appraisal of the property was as of October 2013. That makes no sense at all. You could just disregard that. As far as I'm concerned, you don't need hey, you don't even need to look at it. The look the at the appraisal. Appraisal is 2013. It has no bearing for today or for, to, well, for October 1, 2020. Would agree yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah. I would agree with that. You know what? That's I, unfortunate. I agree. I agree. But if we just look at that one comp, if we're looking for comps, if you're trying to get a feel for what, what the value is, if we look that, if, I don't know, if we look at that now, um, this house is actually better than that. Those houses are not FEMA compliant in that. This is the only FEMA compliant house in that complex. Um, actually, it's not. It might not be anymore. It was done in 2000. Yeah, it is. It was after Storm Sandy. Yeah. So it's probably still FEMA compliant. Okay. So um, this will be more valuable than the other properties. Now, this is, and by the way, I say nobody lives in them. Let me, let me rephrase that. This, this, this priest who lives in there is the only person who lives there full time. No other property, no other house has any full-time owners in it. He's the he's a tenant, but he's the only adult that lives in that community. And when was that? Ba is, are you basing that? This is John. Sorry, I got to get used to stating who I am. Mm -hmm. Um, this is back. Are you taking the assessment change from uh, Donald Ross that was in two thousand fourteen? Uh, I wasn't even looking at that. Oh, the the nail in the email. And <laughs> there's an email in there that says, Father Bill, am I missing something in here that confirms that the priest is still living there? I just told you that he is. If that's not good enough, I don't know what to say. And you, I'm just, just curious like, that... Can that, you that the yes. yes. Um, so it sounds like that uh, Paulette knows that 
Father Bill is still living in this as a tenant. Father Bill died two years ago. Father Bill saved body. Isn't there another one in there now, though? I, I have no idea. I thought there was another priest in there. So, I mean, I'm... Oh, okay, Maybe there may be. Okay. But I guess for this is John. From my my point of view, uh, another comp would be that 781 Fairfield Beach Road, um, with lesser square feet and um, the age is different. Unless Paulette or Judy, you can tell me that the 781 presented is not in that complex. Really? Really? Like that for Sorry. Go ahead, Paulette. 781, is, I believe, is in that complex. It goes to that complex starts with uh, seven. What's the house I do? Seven, seven, seven thirty-three Fairfield Beach Road is the first one, almost across from this one. Um, you go in the little gate, and then that's where it starts. And then there's two lanes of house. I think it's twenty-four houses in that complex, and they're all like cottages and things. None of them are FEMA compliant except for this one. They're all built around the same time. Some are bigger than others. They range in size from like about 800 square feet to maybe 1,200. I don't know how big this one is. This might be different because it's newer. Um, but they're their own little community. 1,500. So they are valuable. Yep. They're valuable. There's no doubt about it. I mean, they're great rentals. People make a lot of money on those rentals. Um, I have one quick uh, question just for clarification uh, while we're deliberating on um, on this appraisal. Are we deliberating on what the appellant fair market value of 861,300 or are we deliberating on a value outside of that? Um, That's a really good question. That's a really good question. I'm, I'm still, this is Judy. I'm still, I'm still unsure of whether the 861.3 is actually the right number. But again, I know that the one million one ninety one seven is not. Um, yeah. Know. And I am prone to think that if he may be due a reduction, right? I mean, I think it may be possible that it is overvalued. I would just feel extremely uncomfortable putting up to another figure and voting on it. I would rather him come back next year and have a better case for a proper number if we believe that his that his value is too low. But that's just me. Uh, this is Harold. Kathleen, you're raising your hand. Yeah, I just would encourage both of you. I don't know if I can share my screen or not. I just would encourage you to look at the two comps. That's 781 Beach Road and 1240 and look at the condition of those. So I don't did those comps, Judy, look at the appraisal or those were in different comps that he gave you because they're very different properties. They're not FEMA compliant. They look like they're probably from the twenties. And so if I were, you know, trying to find something similar in the beach area, even though this is a condo, I probably would be looking more at, you know, a newer home or something that's raised and not necessarily you know, two other properties that are on Lantern Point um, that are, you know, not in as good a condition. And second, I do believe, um, I think they're on Alexis's list as a reschedule, but there are five or six other appeals on Lantern Point that are coming in. I don't know the, I don't know if the condition, I haven't looked at the paperwork or the pictures yet for those, but we will be getting those. I guess those are not being heard until the week of the 15th. So just know that we're getting more lantern point, you know, so if we feel that we should wait on this one, um, or I'm just not comfortable with those two comps and I'm, you know, and I'm not quite comfortable with the, or at least the condition of 781 when I looked at the picture, it's a 1924 house, um, you know, uh, sold for 762. Um, if his is even if it's a little bigger at 861, I don't think that that's the right ask price. So. I'm just, you know, want you to take a look at those pictures on the field cards if you. You're in, you're in the same. Kathleen, you feel pretty much the same as me. Like and the I, the A sixty one is too low, um, and I, it's not supported. However, uh, he does deserve something. I mean, he does deserve some kind of reduction. But then again, Monique, you know what? You make a really good point. Is that we can arbitrarily. Put a number because we don't have this information, but now we stuck with it for the next five years. Um, 
So I look to the more experienced members of the board to suggest what is best for the homeowner here? What is best for the Fairfield taxpayer on this particular instance? Because I'm new and I want to do right by him. Paula, I think I agree that we should wait. If there's going to be other um, appeals from Lantern Point, I think we should probably look at those all together. Normally, I'm not in favor of that, but because it's a special little community um, and it's a very, di very different use of the property, like I said, people don't buy there to live there. And it's, you, you have to be willing to accept what it's like to be there more so than other parts on Fairfield Beach Road. It's basically, this little area is basically an extension of Fairfield U. You might want to call it a dorm of Fairfield U. Think of it that way. So I think we should look at the other ones in this one all together. I think that would be best for everybody. Okay. Do we need a motion for this, Kathleen, or we're just going to table it? This is Kathleen. Uh, uh, <laughs> What's your name? Prue. Oh, yeah. Is there a motion on this? Is there a mo did Judy ever make a motion? No, I don't I, know. I didn't make a motion to do any. I didn't make a motion to do anything. So I made right. a motion that we hear this lantern point along with the other ones at the same time so we can make a, an educated decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's no a, motion. I don't think you need a motion for that. Right. Okay. This is Kathleen and, you know, I don't, unless I believe you have all the condos. So unless, you know, when we come along other condos that are newer or more similar to this, that you would see that, yes, this is actually more, you know, are those other two lantern points comps for this one? Maybe not because they're, you know, they're, they're beach college kid rentals. This house is a much different animal. So in your process, Judy, of hearing other, you know, condos in that area, you may well say, you know, oh, okay, this is much similar to, you know, some other property that we hear in there in the price range. So I okay, I, I agree. Uh, this is Harold. Uh, very good discussion. Uh, I would suggest, Judy, that you make a note on, of this appeal so that when it's brought up again, uh, with hopefully some additional. Uh, information that we will derive that we can move through this appeal a decision uh, more rapidly and come up okay. with a fair decision. Uh, it is now, uh, did you have another, Judy? No, on my, but not on Fairfield Beach Road. All right. Uh, it is now 11.45 a.m. We've been on for approximately two hours and 45 minutes. Um, if, if I raise a hand, if most of you are ready to take a break, uh, we can take a, uh, let's say a 20 minute, half hour break, whatever you feel comfortable with and uh, reconvene at 1215. Uh, with a raise of hand, if, if you're in agreement with me to take a break now. This is Kathleen, do we need, does everybody need a half an hour or 15 minutes? What, what are your thoughts? Listen, I'm more lean than I could keen by that. This is John, I give you 15. Uh, well, uh, this is Harold. Judy just indicated that she may not be uh, able to come back after a break. So if, if we are in agreement, we will let Judy do uh, an additional one that she has had planned to do. And then we can take a break for 20 minutes. All in agreement. Yeah, I will not be back after the break either. All yeah, right. me too, Alexis. Um, will we still have sufficient members with uh, six members? I believe so. Uh, Kathleen, yes. Uh, Catherine, yeah, I'm Giff sorry. When Giff will come back, so I'm um, quorum. I can be available for the quorum in the afternoon. Excellent. Okay, let's uh, move ahead then. Uh, this is Harold with uh, Judy uh, doing one more appeal, and then we can reconvene 20 minutes after that ends. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think this one uh, will, will certainly won't be as complicated. Um, this is appeal number 531. Our property owner's name is Catherine Augusto. The property is located at 256 Pratt Street, Fairfield, obviously. Uh, it is a two-family home. Uh, the town's value is 839.5, and the uh, the appellant's opinion of fair market value is 575,000. And this is a this is interesting. I want to talk about appraisals because appraisals are really important. 
we look at these appraisals and uh, here's what you need to understand about an appraiser and about an appraiser who brings in, who submits all these documents and submits the appraisal along with the, uh, the other information. You, they have to get a license in order to appraise. They can't just arbitrarily give a number to any particular property. They have to do it, they have certain guidelines. And if they don't adhere to those guidelines, they're gonna lose their license, they're gonna lose their livelihood. So when you get an appraisal, for the very most part, those appraisals should hold really, really good stock. These people are uh, have been educated and do these appraisals all the time, all right? So you may hear me say that, throughout the course of these hearings. When, in, when you get an appraisal, you really got to look at that. They're held by guidelines. They have to hold, have to hold true to that. Now, so that being said, I got an appraisal on this. And every once in a while, here's what appraisers can do. They, they do have a range. They can go on the low side of reasonable to the higher side of reasonable. So, uh, it, they're not, it's not a foolproof, it's a subjective number, although they do have ways to arrive at it. So the uh, owner submitted an appraisal on this property for $575,000. And as I look at <clears throat> these comparables um, that were used, I, I don't think it's, I don't think the appraisal is correct. I think the appraisal is on the low side of reasonable. There you go. Sorry about yeah. that. I'm saying it again now. You know, I think the 575 is way too low. And um, that's, that's, that's my thought. That's my thought. Judy, go ahead. Somebody had a question. Yeah, I did. Paul, I didn't hear the appeal, the appeal number. I can't look it up. Can you just tell me the number? Yeah, that's 531. Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry. Yep. Okay, hold on. I'm going to make everybody a little louder. Okay. So, yeah, and here we go. All right. So, I think it's just a little low. I, I think it's low. And it's certainly, again, uh, you know, the town's value at um, 839.5. Oh. Yes, no. uh, this is Roni Cattell speaking. Um, thank, like I do trust your judgment, Judy, and I do believe that um, if you if you believe that the appellant's opinion is too low, I again very reluctant about countering with a higher amount because then we are doing a disservice to the appellant because then they're stuck with that new number that we give them for the next five years without them having the opportunity to appeal next year, right? And so even if it's for one year, I, if we're not deciding on the appellant's opinion of the fair market value, then I would be leaning towards rejecting so the appellant can have a more compelling case of what he really believes fair market value is. Now, if you do believe that, th that what he's requesting is fair and reasonable, don't, totally willing to, uh, to look at that, those numbers, but. That's just my opinion. All right, I, you know, I, and I'm sorry to ask this question, but you know, when this comes up, and it didn't come up a lot, because I'm looking at it, just these couple of, the first couple of ones that I look at, and then the appraisal or what the appellant has asked for is to well, but there should be some kind of, some kind of adjustment. If we don't have anything, um, yeah, okay, one second, Kathleen, is, is it, best to just reject, deny it. And that's what it seemed like. But from Monique, that sounds like the best yeah. plan for the homeowner is if it is, if it doesn't look appropriate, that we're better off denying it because otherwise they're stuck for whatever for the next five years, they can't actually contest it. Yeah, and I wouldn't say across the board completely deny. I mean, I do think that there is can be a case made to go higher than the opinion, but I think that case needs to be made from the appellant, almost like as a two-part thing where they may say 575, 
But if they show like valuable things saying that should be like, I'm just throwing an arbitrary number out there, like 650, for example, right? Then I believe we can go off of an actual 650 number from the appellant, but I don't think it's fair for us to create that value for them. Right. So what do they, I'd like to hear from everybody. Uh, well, I, it's Catherine Gap. Anybody else? I don't want to interrupt. Okay. Um, definitely like where Ronique is going. And, um, because I was not, I didn't listen to all of the Fairfield beach. If there's more than, oh, I'm sorry. This was a multifamily somewhere else. Mm -hmm. so we're just, just as a, as a concept for the process. Um, I am going to be recommending, um, I believe the word is grant, partial approval, partial denial, partial grant um, for a couple of mine. That's why I think to to do it. And I think we can come up with a number that's not necessarily the appellants. However, as Ronique, I think, pointed out, I think it has to be well documented and, uh, you, you know, fair. And of course, it'll be deliberated and voted on. But I I definitely will stress that it should be documented as to what what was granted in part would be my opinion. So Judy, I know I, I wouldn't feel comfortable just picking out a number saying, well, this is what I think or overriding an, an appraiser. Um, but, you know, and to your point, they are licensed and they have a lot to, to lose. Uh, they were very busy last year. There were, there might've been other uh, circumstances. The appraisal might've been using comps outside of the period. All of that would have to be documented if we're just going to do a, an override of the appraisal. This is Harold. I, I think that Ronique and Catherine uh, are saying the same thing, basically, that we need to justify uh, the number that we're coming up with if we choose to grant in part uh, the appeal. And I believe that justification needs to come from the appellant and not from us creating that value. Actually, I don't agree with that. Yeah, I that part that I might. <laughs> Sorry, Ronique. <laughs> if we're, if we're going to, to Paul, do you have a comment? Yes, I don't. I don't agree with that. I, I agree with what we said so far to the point where we let the appellate do it. Um, if if we're using proper information, and we have proof of why we chose a number, then I don't see a problem with it. Um, I don't mind going back. I don't mind sending, denying things so that they can come back another time. But I think we have to be careful how many times we do that. Um, they'll just come back and, you know, we don't, we think we're doing them a service by not by denying it because they can come back. We have no idea what's going to happen next year. We may not be doing them a service, but if we have to, we have to, I'm just saying that if there's, for example, if I want an MLS right now and I could find three comps of multifamily homes in that area, similar to that one that are that sold for, you know, 700,000 or 800 or 600,000 within our evaluation period, then I would feel comfortable saying, we'll give you a partial. This is what we'll give you. And this is why I'm okay with that. That, uh, this is Harold. Uh, of course, that is what we're exactly what we're saying. If we can find justification for a partial, we will grant a partial. I agree. Right. Okay. I think we are all agreeing with that. And okay, I we were if we just gonna... keep on denying, we're going to double our workload anyway. So I, I, I don't think that that's our goal. However, in this case, yes, this appraisal is is not good. Judy's absolutely right. If you look at it, he's got. Places. He's got comps from Norwalk. That has nothing to do with Fairville Beach area. This is John. I want to echo that <laughs> when I'm looking through this. Yeah, this, this is, is Kathy. It, it is also it is also a bank appraisal. You know, it was done for probably a mortgage. Um, you know, um, so whether they inspected the property and actually got inside, you know, or they just used their computer and pulled some numbers and you know did it that way. I didn't look. I didn't look at all the pictures of the inside, but I agree with the Norwalk and some other addresses. And it is an older appraisal, right? It was from February of 2020, so a lot of the comps are are you know earlier in 2019 with Norwalk and other things. So I just don't think it's a you know that it's a good appraisal. I just want to point out that I mean it is the it is the appellant's responsibility to present a case, uh, not for us to make the case for them, right? So I just want to caution, you know, I, I know we want to be fair to the appellants, but we so you know we shouldn't be creating it. That's that's their job to come and present um, an argument that we can either agree with, agree, agree in part with, or deny. 
Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter, for that reminder. Thank you, Peter. Judy, did you have any, did you want to make a decision on this? Did you want to table this? I'm just curious what your thoughts are on this. Well, yes. Got to put stress on it. I just want to. Oh, <laughs> yeah, don't later. stress out. <laughs> okay. I think that um, based upon the information that was presented to us, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Ronnie. I appreciate you guys very much. I think uh, the best thing to do is to deny this application to allow her, uh, allow the owner to give a better argument and come back at another time, if that's what she so chooses to do. Is that a motion? That's my, that's my motion. I'll second that. This is Ronique Patel. I'll call uh, the vote. Uh, Kathleen, first, you say have something. Sure, to I just yeah. Um, I think the motion just should be a little simpler to deny rather than to ask them to come back another time, so that we're consistent in our motions. So I think Judy's motion is to deny, right? Okay. Okay. Let me let me just say my motion is to deny this application. Thank you. Based upon the information provided. And this is Harold. It's been seconded by Ronique uh, with a show of hands. Uh, can we indicate how many are denying this appeal? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Alexis, are you still on? Alexis, are you there? If she is, she's on mute. And um, I'm back. Sorry, I am here and I vote in favor. Of denial, is that correct? Of denial, yep. Mm -hmm. All right. The vote is unanimous. Uh, eight mem. Oh, what? How many are you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In favor of denial. Oh, I, I I'm sorry, Paulette. Uh, yes, yes, you? I'm in favor of denial. Yes. I am in favor. So of we denial. are. Yeah. So one, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, Thank it's you. eight. It's nine. Yeah, and it's nine unanimous. In favor of denial. <laughs> So now it is 12 o'clock midday. Um, I suggest we take uh, a 20 minute break, uh, if that's okay with everybody, and come back at 1220 to continue our wonderful work. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Judy. Bye. I'll try to come back if I can. Please. Thanks, everybody. And Kathleen, thank you. thank you. And Harold, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, I believe the meeting is, is resumed. Uh, recording has started. And uh, the time now for the reconvening of our deliberation on Saturday, March the 5th. The time now is 12.24 p.m. And uh, Prue, can you confirm that recording has started? Yes, recording both. Uh, Recordings have started. We have a, a quorum uh, for this meeting. Uh, Kathleen, do you think uh, we need to do a roll call again? Well, I haven't heard back, so I will do a roll call. Uh, this is Harold Zawatsky. As I mentioned your names, would you please uh, repeat that you are present? Uh, Kath Catherine Giff. Catherine Giff is here. Uh, John Sayblack. John Sayblack. Not unless he married Judy over lunch, which I don't think happened. If his wife and would her say about that, but. Uh, John Sayblack. <laughs> John Spoliar is here. Uh, oh, of course. I'm sorry. John Spoliar. 
old age is creeping in. Uh, we have uh, Paulette Crozo. Paulette's here. Ronique Patel. Ronique Patel, President. And Kathleen Griffin. Kathleen Griffin's here. Uh, we may be joined by other members of the board, and I will announce their presence if they arrive. But we do have a quorum to proceed. Um, would anyone like to present? Uh, Catherine Giff can present um, if no one else wants to, <laughs> if no one else needs to. And um, I was interested in presenting uh, six appeals right now, um, all from the South Pine Creek neighborhood. Is that okay with everybody to get started? Yes, okay. please proceed. Um, this this, this is my first presentation of, uh, of hearings as a, as a new member of the board. So I'm ready to take advice, um, but th this is how I did it. So I, um, I have just sent over um, some of my notes so that everybody could have it. If they want to check their email, they could have it as I speak. Those documents will be uh, forwarded to be scanned in and uh, recorded in the, in the files, both online and hard copies. Um, they are my hearing notes and um, should just okay. help yep. if I can open it. Okay, so um, I believe there are 12 appeals overall for the South Pine Creek neighborhood. I have heard and I'm going to present on six um, this morning, this afternoon for the start. And um, among the six, I'd like to, I, I've grouped them. So the, the first three that I'll be discussing are, are really um, uh, homes that have been there uh, for decades and have not been uh, renovated or, um, well, renovated and they've, been, well, they may have been maintained, uh, questionable, but they all have, um, of course, they're in land. Um, and so when I looked at those and we'll discuss and, and, and appeal to each, but my, my approach was to look at them as uh, what was their land values really, and then how much would we add for dwellings as I was looking for. And uh, so I'll start with, if I may start with the first one being uh, 37 South Street, which is uh, appeal number 404. It is owned by the Fianos. Okay, um, the Fianos did have an affidavit uh, for the appellant, um, a Ms. A Marisa Pula. Uh, who, okay, so did present in, in person. The uh, total town value for their property was given at uh, $720,200. And uh, they have requested to have no increase to their uh, property um, value. So they are requesting last year's value to remain at $640,100. Um, there were no comps that were given. It was just through discussion of the properties, um, the, which was this property was purchased in 1994 um, and have, has had no major repairs or renovations. So although there were no comparative sales that were documented, there was a verbal statement given that there was a new build across the street that had sold for a million two. So that was the information that we had and uh, the home has fallen into a bit of disrepair due to COVID of not only the, uh, the residents who have not yet received their vaccines, as well as the work that they can have done to have contractors in. So that was the appeals part. Um, so when I, I took a look at what was there, um, I noticed that the, the land value for the field cards were very consistent for that, um, that street. And um, what I'm going to suggest is that uh, we deny the appeal in total. Um, as the land has gone up, they are most of their value is in the land of uh, 533, which is very consistent with their neighbors. And um, their dwelling had been had received some depreciation. So I am therefore um, making a motion to deny the appeal due to the information that was presented. This is Harold. Any any discussion? Um, I uh, agree. Uh, there's um, there's not a whole lot of information they really gave on this appeal, um, and I'm looking. Did the attorney 
provide any kind of documentation on this at all? Or because I don't, the only things I see is the affidavit the, showing the, that they're the legal owners. The file is complete. Okay. The file is complete yeah, as you okay. say. There were no com comps. It was a verbal discussion of comparative sales. And no comparisons. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is Harold. I believe there's a motion in the table on the table. Is that correct? Uh, I have made the motion. Uh, Catherine Giff has made the motion to deny the appeal. I will second the motion. This is John. Any further discussion? This is Harold. Um, I just want to say that um, I'm seconding to this because I would have to think that um with the time adjustment of five years that the value would go up and and would not stay the same even if the um value of the house that's on the property did did go down some i can't see it going down that much to adjust uh or to for the what's being contributed or what's being asked for i should say the other thing is, is I do notice that there is a 37% depreciation already uh, assigned to this house on the field card. So I think that the assessment here is accurate. Thank you, John. Any further comment? This is Paulette. I, um, I agree to deny the appeal. And my decision is based on the fact that they don't have evidence, certainly not on the fact that the value, the land is too expensive and the house has a 37% depreciation. But because we don't do this for a living, I do this, I do real estate for a living, and I don't know if that's correct because that's not my job to depreciate houses. So as much as I'd like to say that I want more information, I can't because they didn't give us any. So I'm going to agree to deny. Uh, this is Harold with a show of hands. Can I see uh, your votes for uh, in favor of denial? The vote is unanimous. We have six votes for denying this appeal. This is Harold. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, nope. You wish to proceed? I can present another one. Okay, I'm just going to click that one and click that one down. Okay, uh, the second appeal that I would like to present on is for appeal number 36, 848 Oldfield Road. Mr. Sambrook, uh, as the owner, was in attendance and we discussed this. Uh, let me call this one. So, uh, Mr. Sambra uh, bought the property decades ago and actually restored one of the original buildings to make it an inhabitable four room home that he has lived in for over 20 years. Um, and on Oldfield, he, um, he is now surrounded by that is a multifamily zone. So, in his section of it, uh, Basically, all the lots have been converted into new, new build, fam, uh, new families, and there was actually a condominium development made out of it. So they're duplexes, uh, not just a, you know, a, a multifamily. So uh, he is one of the very few single family homes remaining, um, and he was not able to navigate uh, all the websites. So while he was there, we we called up a few of the. Um, the field cards for the others. And I was able to document that uh, what he was saying with a little more documentation, but his next door neighbor, uh, number 858, uh, sold as a tear down in 2015 for 300,000 and a two family was built. Um, another old uh, 851 old field, which I believe is across the street from him. Uh, the lot was bought for 420,000 in 2018 um, and then was sold half of the duplex was sold last year, July, 2020 for 780,000. So the additional factors that Mr. Sambrook would like to consider for his property is uh, the condition of the property and uh, the markability of the lot as a single family uh, is strictly limited to really a tear down and a replacement with a multifamily. So therefore, when we looked at uh, the total town value given to his uh, home, his four room home uh, was $518,000, 310. And he is requesting a value of 400,000. The land value of the 418, uh, I'm sorry, the land value given by the town um, is just over 400,000. And his dwelling is valued at 114,000. Um, I would, 
I will take recommendations for the uh, from the board, but um, I am inclined to since the lot sold next door for 420,000 two years ago, um, these duplexes are sold, selling for the high sevens. Um, I think the land value is fair, if not a little bit reduced that the town has supplied at 400. Um, I, I am prepared or would recommend, but would like to hear everybody else's. I would like to decrease his uh, value primarily on the dwelling to um, a, an overall value of 450,000. And I'd like uh, ideas on that. Uh, this is Harold. Yep. Looking, looking at the card, I, I, I feel that this property, uh, the buildings on the property have a certain amount of charm. Uh, the outbuilding is uh, I recognize that to be what looks like a two bay garage. Um, I don't know if you agree with me on that, but it looks like it's a two bay garage. And uh, like I said, it is a certain amount of charm and it has uh, rehab and, and, uh, and addition uh, op opportunities. Um, but, uh, and, and there is, even though it's four, uh, four rooms, it is over 1300 square feet of living space, 1360. So perhaps the rooms are, are good size. I see that the ground floor is 30 by 16. Um, Mr. Sambrook does somewhat dispute the value, the uh, square footage. Um, because the square footage is taken from the outside of the building and, and he actually reconstructed it. Um, therefore, there are some walls there that um, it was the original Craftsman house from Sears. I mean, it's, it's almost a store. But um, when he had to, it's it, there's a lot of cinder block in there. And then, you know, when you attach the, you know, to put up the sheetrock and you have to, he really thinks it's much closer on his dimensions to just over a thousand square feet. Still good size rooms, he's not denying that, but he sure. thinks the outside dimensions are, um, you know, a little, not deceptive is kind of too strong a word, but make it appear okay. bigger than his rooms really are. And there is no second story. The second story is just really a loft uh, storage. Understood. <clears throat> All right, that's, that's understandable. Yeah. And there's only so much you can, you can tell from, from the photo anyway. So you have a motion, uh, this is Harold, you have a motion on the table. I do, I think, uh, you know, overall, uh, I, and I don't know what's appropriate, but I was wondering, I, I was thinking more that the, the land value is closer to the 420 that at, for a previous lot that was sold. And then he, um, the depreciation in the dwelling is, I would add 30,000 for the dwelling and I would come up with a value of 450,000. I have a question before we vote on that. When it comes to square footage, when I'm putting it on the, on our assessments, is that from building permits being pulled? Like, like if there's work being done, like I see there was work done on the garage for re-roofing, did they do they evaluate square footage there? No, it'll just be the appraiser going out and measuring the outside of the building. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I have a question on the, the property reference next door um, where they put the duplex. Do you have any idea how big that lot was? No, not offhand. Um, the lots are pretty consistent in size, and as he says, um, he's the only one who has any green space left. And the duplexes, I really did just call up a few of the things while he, you know, while he was there and shortly when he left, trying to give a little more support to uh, Mr. Sanford, our retired chief of police for the last 42 years. <laughs> This is John. A um, couple notes on the card here that I'm I'm seeing that was submitted. Um, looks like the house uh, has a 58% good on it um, with it. Um, and then the garage 
did he mention if it was truly rebuilt in 2001, like the card has? Um, I think that, that jives with his his narrative. Yes, he says okay. he has it done work. He, he bought the house and over 12 years had restored it to what he could live in. And he okay. has not done work on it in, in 20 years. Uh, this is Harold. I, I think that the condition issues are being considered by Catherine in her recommendation of a partial approval. So uh, I would say that the adjustment to the card might be done based upon that reduction. This is Paul. I agree. I agree with Catherine. I think that it needs a reduction um, because we don't have any other information from the appellate. I'm going to go with that figure. I think it's reasonable. But I just want to point out that. When we're looking at properties that are in B zones like this, we have to be careful that in this in this case, it's okay. He's got enough property as far as the total amount of property. But whenever we think about putting up a duplex where a single family was, we have to make sure that we check the um the setbacks and make sure that he has the correct configuration. Otherwise, the property would be, you know, could be considered less valuable. In this case, he has enough land and he doesn't have any other documents, so I'm not gonna get into it. But when we look at other ones, we should look at that, uh, the configuration of the lot, which we can see on um uh, on the on uh, the, the public record information. This is Harold. I Thank appreciate you, Paula. That's a good point, Paulette. That's a Thank good. You, that is a good point. Uh, so, Paulette, are you seconding the motion? Yes, I'll second. I'll second. All right, we have a second to Catherine's motion. All those in favor of a uh, to grant in part. A reduction to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars on this property. Please raise your hand. Uh, we don't have a uni unanimous uh, vote. Oh, Paulette, are you raising your hand? I'm sorry, I, I am. can't see. I'm, here it is. Okay, yes. thank you. One, two, three, four, five, to approve in part to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And uh, one more voter. How do you vote, Ronnie? I vote no. I just want, I would just wish the appellant just had a little bit more um, information to be given on this case. Um, so I'm reluctant just uh, going off of another number, even though I do trust your judgment, Paulette and, and Catherine. I just, or Kathleen, I just want to, I'd, I'd rather hear from the appellant. I, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. This is Kathleen. I voted no as well. So it was actually, yeah, I think it's I four two. Yeah, it's four two. So it is four in favor and two to deny. And uh, let me just say, this is Harold speaking. Let me just say that for the record, uh, reasons for your votes are not necessary, but uh, it is uh, very helpful uh, to air them and, and you're welcome to do the, that, but reasons for uh, approval or denial are not or partial approval are not required. Okay. I, I just one other thing, Catherine. I think in your document at the top you have the appeal number and the street number the same. If you just before you submit it, just correct the Thank appeal you. number. Yes, that's why they hadn't been submitted. I was working on that. But thank you very much. I will definitely <clears throat> get that. Does anybody have it easily placed where the correction is and I'll make it right now. Okay, I'll, I'll make sure of that. Appeal. I do. I got it on my. I, I finally found it by his, and he isn't even the appellant, right? Somebody else was the appellant, Michelle he, Bayou or whatever. He okay. Presented, he presented in person, so I'm not sure why he uh, had that appellant. But sure. So 30 number it. appeal number 36. That was. Yeah. Okay. Um. So does that carry with a four two, or does that not? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Your motion Thank is you. Carried. This is okay. Yes, and and this is Kathleen um, Prue. So that's in uh, grant in part is how we've been doing it in the past. Grant grant yes. in part and uh -huh. deny. So it's to grant in part. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next one that I would like to uh, present is is a si similar situation. Um, so again, I'll, I'll make a motion, but I am. Definitely welcome to friendly amendments and feedback. It is hearing number 583 at property address 46 Sunfields Lane. Uh, 
Terrence Keegan is the owner. Um, he inherited this property. And um, his first thing was to question the field card because now this is a property that even it's called South Pine Creek, but it sits on the entrance ramp to I-95 from Mill Plain Road. So that is its location. Um, and I'm going to call up the next one. Okay. So, um, you said, that, you said that's appeal number 583. Correct. Did I get that one wrong too? 583. No, no, no. Yes, is 46 Sunfield Lane. Oh, okay. I thought you said all no. good? Okay. Sorry. My, my... A lot of numbers. Nope. All good. Okay. Um, so this, this property does sit, it is again, a very small, um, house with no renovations made in decades. Um, now the field part car does list it as being in the triple A zone. You can see on the bottom there, and, um, it is definitely not the triple A zone. That is two acre zoning up in Greenfield Hill. However, I did speak with, um, Ross Murray, the assessor, and he said that he, he would correct the typo, but it is just a typo and does not factor into the, uh, calculations or the model. So I want to make that clear. Although our discussion during the hearing, because was going to confirm that was really about the the value of this home based on that being in the wrong zone quote unquote and i i would like to you know it's it's not harold uh yes this is harold is there uh did he say what the code should be or is that in the appraisal we're report? gonna get i have not seen either from mr keegan who's going to tell me what zone it is in or um and i did not get the correct zone from Ross Murray, but uh, Ross felt that whatever the, the calculation was, the number that was given there, it's South Pine Creek neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, excuse me, I, have a, I just have a question. I don't, and I know you don't know the answer. It's kind of just a rhetorical question. How could this possibly be in the South Pine Creek area? It's nowhere near South Pine Creek Road. That's why I wanted that's to say exactly no where it is. Yeah, it's, it's off the Mill Plain Road. It is not in the South Pine Creek neighborhood. So I don't know what that what that if that matters to the value, but it certainly is not. In, it's certainly not there. And the Paul and I kind of have the same. Uh, and, and that's now Terrence Keegan is a he's a realtor. He's been a realtor in town um, for decades as well. So that's what he was questioning. You know the use. He did have a professional appraiser um, prepare uh, an opinion of the property with the house. And the professional appraiser has it at with the house 265,000. The town does have, which is their requested value. The town's total is 406,500. And that would be uh, for the land 362,000 and the dwelling had a $44,000 um, value for the town. So, um, again, we've questioned that we've questioned the location. We know where it is. Um, I had noted, I think Paulette, probably the same thing you're noting that the neighborhood code, uh, 67 does have an adjustment code of 1.85 and the site condition is reported at 0.9. Um, and that's probably where I, I wanted to start the discussion because again, I'm still inclined to look at this as primarily the value and it's a unique property. So, you know, that it, it's not quite a neighborhood and that in front of it is the I-95 entrance ramp and behind it is the Fairfield train commuter lot. I believe there's one other house on that entrance ramp. And That's then correct. the, and the, uh, that would back up to Fairfield County real estate, which is owned by Mr. Uh, you know, that, that is, uh, Mr. Keegan's, um, commercial business. So it has commercial on one side and I-95 on another, but there is one other home. I'm not sure that quite constitutes much of the neighborhood. So that's where I wanted to get the value. Do we, um, you know, he's requesting 265,000. I am inclined to provide a motion to uh, definitely decrease the value of the land of the property from 406,000 two may i hear some comments i would i would agree to i'm sorry paulette, oh i'm sorry paulette you know we i don't see your hand i know the motion oh, but sorry. could i have, could I have kathleen john and paulette weigh in could we do it in that order sure. kathleen john paulette 
Uh, well, John, this is Kathleen. John, why don't you go first? I, I have up the 54 <clears throat> Sunfield Lane property. Um, I'm looking at that field card, and I do know that they came before the BAA last year. I believe the houses, I know they're similar locations. It's one of the two properties, you know, they're right there on the entrance ramp. And um, I'm just looking to see what, what we did with it last year. I don't remember if he had an appraisal or not, but we did change them last year. Um, let's see, 290, 262. It went up a little, I because I, I need my calculator. Uh, the, the assessed value, but pr prior assessed value was 262, 290. Oh, you know, it's probably on the other card, isn't it? It's on the vision site. Sometimes you have to scroll down the bottom to see. So. The, the neighboring property, uh, I, again, I haven't compared it. The neighbor one is nine, th the land is 9,072 square feet. Um, the current, we, that is currently appraised at 414,600. Um, in 2019, it was 374,700. And so I believe that's the BAA reduced ballot. You know, I'm, I know something happened last year when not all the data made it into the into vision on time. So I just is the subject property around 9,000 square feet as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 9, I just had it for the nine, land. Three, this is how 9348 nine, 9348 for the land. Okay. And how about the square footage of the home? Uh, that would be on the back. Let's see. And I'm just come. I've got the uh, one. just over a 1000 square feet. Just over a 1000. Okay garage under and the neighboring one has a garage next door let me just where's the square foot i'm in the wrong place here i think they're pretty consistent 1140 square feet right next door <clears throat> so i would say that you know you know 140 uh, square feet difference um but they've got the garage next door as opposed to a garage under the lots are similar size they're very similar locations so, um, sorry, I just want to look at his appraisal a little bit, or let, somebody else can comment. I just want to see why, how the appraisal came as low as 265, um, because I, I, if I recall, Harold, maybe you do, or um, Peter's off the call, but I, um, I believe last year we looked at this one pretty closely when we get when we took it to 374. Um, so I'm just going to look at this appraisal and see why he thinks it's 265 if we were pretty confident in our 374 last year. Uh, what, was the, this is Harold, what was the appraisal of, of that other property last year? Sure, 54 Sunfield. Yeah, and what was the appraised value? Uh, if I'm reading the card correctly, we had it at 374, 700, and it went up to 414, 600. And you know, I. Land and dwelling, land and improvement. Yeah, I, I just looking at the total yeah. value of the property. Yeah, I'm not dividing oh. it out. I just I'm just looking nope. at that. That was yeah. the question. Yeah, and um, let's see. Oh, that's the old well, property. That would, be, that. that would be consistent. And uh, the appeal, the appellant, um, is questioning that the value of that lot. And right. I am I am noting that that neighborhood has an adjustment of 1.85. Could, excuse me, this is Paulette. What does that mean at 1.85? Again, I've never had that explained to me, so I don't know what that means. Sure, it means so every, it's being valued as a property in the South Pine Creek neighborhood. So each neighborhood is given whatever the neighborhood code has a corresponding match. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. Um, to the number. Okay. So, you know, to your point, questioning if it's a South Pine Creek. Um, and then it does become a matter of wording, uh, you know, as the appellant is saying, well, it's sitting on I-95 and it's surrounded by commercial, you know, it doesn't have the same as a South Pine Creek neighborhood. Right. So this is, is Kathy. I, oh, I can look at the card a little bit more closely. If you look at, I'm looking at 54, but I'm wondering if it's the same thing on, on the subject properties card. If you look at the bottom, there is a location adjustment for the highway. So what that does is really, uh, as the way Ross explains it to me, uh, the neighborhood code is a code. The neighborhood adjustment is a is an adjustment on and off for the entire code, uh, entire town. So everybody in neighborhood 67 would have 
1.850 because it's based on some single value for the entire town and then they then they use the neighborhood adjustment code you know for the area of town to bring it up and down so i'm guessing there's some neighborhoods that are maybe point not have a point nine neighborhood adjustment other neighborhoods have you know something above one per a 1.0 and that's sort of the formula they use you know to have that one one value for whatever it is an acre or a half acre it's complicated but basically that's what the neighborhood adjustment would, is right, right but so how it values so it's this card is valuing the appellant was questioning the AAA zoning so that's why we were discussing it and that's how i learned i agree with your assessment kathleen that the neighborhood code 067 will all have the neighborhood adjust in 1.85 so right. I'm noting that, that even though the AAA does not have, per Ross Murray, does not have an impact on it, I'm noting, as Paulette noted, this property surrounded by commercial properties sitting on an entrance ramp to I-95 is given a neighborhood adjustment of 1.85 as if it belongs to the South Pine Creek neighborhood. And I don't see any adjustment for well, even if it's in the South Pine Creek neighborhood, it's surrounded by commercial properties. I don't see that adjustment. Well, this, this is, is Kathleen, is that's the location. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, the appellant's questioning the value and doesn't think that, you know, it should be valued at. The, this is John, this is, uh, looks like on the landline valuation section, um, there's a 0.9, so it looks like there's some kind of Addition. discount for the land. Um, but I'm not sure if, if that's enough for what the, the appellant yeah. is looking for. Well, and his professional appraiser put in for 265,000. So that's where I'm sitting And Harold's raised his hand. Harold. Yes. Uh, the, the current land value is being assessed at. Two hundred and fifty three thousand four hundred dollars. Uh, Correct. So its appraisal but, is three hundred and sixty two. But the total uh, the total value is being appraised at four hundred and six thousand four uh, six hundred. The neighboring property at fifty four Sun Sunfield uh, is currently valued at four hundred and fourteen thousand six hundred. Uh, so it. I'm questioning if he put the right number in his opinion, uh, because that is less than the assessed value of the land. I think this is Paulette. Looking at the whole thing, the thing as a whole, it the, the land, the whole thing, the appraisal to me in my mind is correct. This this house is a mess. Did you look at it? Did you look inside of it? Now, which one of you is going to pay that price for this house? Because I think Mr. King would be happy to take it. There, there's, there's no way this house is worth what the town says it's worth. The appraiser has a valid appraisal with valid comps. And by the way, if that, that code, that thing with the neighborhood code is, is what, what was the way it was explained, this house doesn't belong in that neighborhood. And there's just no other way to say it. It's not anywhere near South Pine Creek. That's much more valuable. There's no highway ramp over there. This house is not, it's, it's just not that, that valuable. And, and this kind of a house, this kind of a property, I don't believe goes up in value every year. Not every house does. This just continues to depreciate. This is, this I've is been in it. I know this, this house. Harold, if we feel that it's, uh, that the house is not in the right neighborhood code, then perhaps we should table it for further review and see if the neighborhood code should change. And I would agree with that. If he didn't have an appraisal, but the appraiser knows where this house is. He knows what neighborhood it's in. He picked his comps. Um, let's see, Henderson. Henderson's got highway issues. King White Avenue does too. Kings Highway does, although this is a little better location than Kings Highway. So I don't see anything wrong with the comps. So I don't see a reason to deny this appeal. We, I don't think we have a good I, reason I to deny. With, oh, you don't. I, have a I agree. It's, I don't think we need to. Ta I'm not voting for tabling it. I think we need to. Make as many decisions as we can and then point out to the assessor that he should look at the property code. But I think we can still make a decision or not. Kathleen and Ronick. Yeah, Ronick. so I just want to say, 
I'm sorry. Yeah, the neighborhood codes, we have to think of them. We can't think of it as, you know, I live in the South Pine Creek area because that's different. You know, we have one neighborhood code that is east of the university and we have another neighborhood code that is Fairfield Woods and there's like 2000 households in those neighborhoods. So what they really are, are a, a way of grouping, you know, an area of town um, together. And then they use other coding. Uh, the site index is one of them from 564. You'll see a site index definitely changes the value of the land on a property. You will also see adjustments like LOC, which is location adjustment, as John or Ronique pointed out. That is how Ross accounts for the highway. So maybe we decide these two Sunfield properties should, you know, a point nine is not enough for being on a highway ramp. I don't know how many other properties we have on highway ramps, but maybe we feel strongly that highway ramp properties, you know, in general should have a point eight five or should be something lower than that. But that, you know, to say when we use the word neighborhood, perhaps we should start to use the word neighborhood code because it's really you know, you're right, like Ludlow Court is also all those properties behind it on the cul-de-sac. Those are also considered the South Pine Creek neighborhood, as well as probably are all of the ones on Blaine Street and some of those that are just south of the post road. You know, okay. if you live in those neighbors. So I'm just trying to, you know, Ross can nope. explain it more later, but we he uses other codes to adjust up and down, just like he did in the Sherman area. Remember, he explained the BP3, 2, and 1 locations. That also is one way where they try to make adjustments within a neighborhood code to better describe the area. I know there's that other entrance ramp street right across from Sunfield, right? I don't remember the name of that road. That's, right. that's, the, houses that's the exit. The that's the exit. The exit ramp, mm -hmm. right? Those that's houses too. I don't know if they're right. at point nine as well. I don't know. I would say that they would. You know, they're probably a little more valuable. So maybe, maybe we should try to, you know, see what it takes to adjust his location. This is Harold. I see a hand from Paulette. Yeah, just to clarify, the street across there that faces the the exit ramp, that's Redfield Road. Redfield. I saw the property on that street. It was a beautiful house with a lovely yard. It took me almost a year. Three people backed out of the deal each time they bought it. They they, they agreed to buy it and then they backed out. Very difficult properties. They're not that valuable. So, and, and you know, I'm just saying that's the, it's kind of that, that those particular, those two streets are like, again, they're particular, they're different than some of the other ones. Like Ludlow Court has some issues, but not like these issues. Um, and I, I'm still not clear. I, I understand Kathleen's explanation about the neighborhood thing, but my question about that, I have to ask Ross, I guess, if he'll ever answer me since he didn't the last time. Um, what, where does he get, like, is this something that they, that the assessors do? Do they have a form? They go to school for this. They have a formula for it. Or does he just sit down and go, okay, these are in this neighborhood. I just want to know that, that, you know, that, that it's done. There's a, there's a scientific reason to do it. And that's an allowable thing to do because it does change values. And I don't think if it's, if it's not the norm and the, the um, standard practice for an assessor to do that, then I think we need to not be looking at that. Because these are not in, the, I don't care what you tell me, say whatever you want. You can't justify that this house belongs in that neighborhood. Not even close. Okay, uh, this is Harold. I, I think we can deal with the information we have on hand. Is I don't believe that it's necessary to point anyone out or anything out that we're not dealing with in our discussions uh, during this call. I believe that Ronik had a, uh, his hand raised. So I'll recognize Ronik. Yeah, I have a question um, for, do we believe that this appraisal is credible? As, like Paula, I think you were alluding to saying that it was, right? And Kathleen was, or um, Catherine was too, right? I I did, okay. I looked at the comment too and I thought it was, but I I don't like to, yes. Uh, answer, yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. This is Harold. Uh, Catherine, did you put a motion on the table? Uh, the mo I don't have a, how much to reduce it to. So now I will amend my motion to um, grant the petition's appeal to match the appraiser that was presented uh, so that the property would, the new value would be $265,000. I'll second that motion. 
Uh, this is this is Harold. Uh, just to clarify, you're you're granting the appeal in full. Is that correct? No one else wanted to uh, break out. See, th sorry, but that's where I was gone to the field. I I, I thought two sixty five was a little low. I I could be it, but I, I would like to provide a better value for the lot. When I look at wh where the town's coming up with that. I mean, I think nobody's dismissing that the dwelling is worth maybe $45,000 because it's in pretty poor condition. Um, and that was my intention with the, the, the land value being part of the neighborhood code 1.85, I think is where the town has gone awry there um, in the a model. And I would suggest that we take the land value for the town. So perhaps my my appeal should be to reduce the town's land value to $250,000, making the uh, total value worth $294,400. Oh. Kathleen? So, are you, yeah. are you, this is Harold, are you amending your motion? I'm amending my motion to yes. You're amending your motion to $294,400. Is that correct? Correct. Do we have a second? I'll second this that is... motion. Mo Monique Patel. I'm sorry. This is Kathleen. Is the motion on the table just to change the land or, or we're, we'll just calculate the new value. We really just want to give them the new value. So. I had originally asked for clarity on what I was allowed to do. Yeah. I want so to do this, this is Kathleen. Often what we do, if we really feel that the house and or the land are bad, we tend to say to Ross, okay, look, this is on the highway. This is this is near the highway. And maybe we can look at the Henderson properties and see if they have a point one adjustment on them as well. But but these are, you know, this is more significant than a Henderson with the highway in the backyard, right? Because these cars are on the entrance ramp in their front yard. So perhaps a point one location adjustment is not a significant enough land adjustment. And let's let him code that property appropriately. Let us know what it does to the land value of the home and then also depreciate the home. So we give him a number that we think a total market value for this home is appropriate. And then he can come back with us, you know, say approximately. I'm thinking if you, you know, if you were, if you give them more highway and, and the house is in worse shape and you reduce the depreciation, I can get you to a number of whatever we think that total number is 325 or 350. And, and then he can do that in the computer. And then that highway change stays on this property in perpetuity. It doesn't come back next year because otherwise he has to put an override on it. So that's it's just, you know. This is knowledge Harold. from the past when we see the stuff bump back if we if he overrides them. So sometimes it's better to have him code it for us. Excuse me, this is Harold. I believe, and Catherine, correct me if I'm wrong, certainly, that you are making a motion to reduce in part to a total of 294,400 and therefore um, allowing the assessor to make changes to the property card that would uh, enable that uh, assessment to be in effect. Is that my, understand is my understanding that is correct. correct? Harold, that is correct. And I would like to point the assessor to the specific uh, coding of neighborhood and location adjustment. Neighborhood adjustment, this is John. Correct. Yeah, this is Kathleen. Actually, box, but that I think the everything that Harold said, plus I would like to um, have the assessor review the reduction to be um, in the B one use codes and so forth. That one line on the field card. And I think Paul asked raised too. Yeah, I did. Thank you. Um, I have a question, just in general. Why would we not accept the 265 from a licensed appraiser with proper comps? And he's a credible person that's been doing this for like 30 years. Why would we say we don't, we'll give you this much, but not that much. And the other thing is, I don't think the assessor, 
I don't, I, I think, I understand we need to, he needs to make changes on the field card. But even if he makes those changes, I don't think he's going to come to a number that's even close to what the appraiser has. And I think that when you've got an appraisal that's right, I don't see why we're trying to change that. The comps are valid. The, 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 we are, it's hard for me to say, even for me to say, well, I think the property's worth X. I don't know. I know it's not worth a lot, but somebody who's better at it than me is telling me that the whole parcel with everything is worth 265. Why can't we just give the guy what, he's, what it's supposed to be? Why do we have to, why do we have to change it? Oh, this is Harold. the property store is like. This is Harold. Uh, I, I think that we have looked at a comp next door uh, at, at 54, number 54 on the same street. And we see how much more that is assessed at. So I think that we can take that information into consideration when we're making our decision. We don't have to always go with what the appraiser has to say. I think that's a huge mistake because this is the person who's supposed to be the expert. We're not. And by the way, the property next door that we're looking at. We've decided in other cases not to allow the homeowner to use that. Why are we able to use it now? It's got to be one way or the other. Well, they, you know, because they, they want to be like my neighbor. Well, we're saying the same thing. Oh, it's like the neighbor. Let's make it this value. How do we know that value isn't wrong? That person just doesn't know to appeal it. This is Harold. We are, we are a panel of fellow Fairfield uh, taxpayers, and we are trying to make decisions with the information that we have on hand. And as we have done uh, and seen in the past, we don't always take the uh, as the appraisers uh, appraisal uh, on face value, and we can consider other factors. I think that that's what we've done in the past, and I think that's what we will con continue to do. Okay. Well, whatever. You know. Well, let's I, whatever. Paulette, I do understand because that's why I put it out first as a yes. kind of friendly mm -hmm. amendment discussion. So I appreciate your your input there, um, and and to rationalize what I'm going with here is the appraisers are praising that property for what it is, and it probably really does have some inherently other value. And and I would be concerned with reducing. The land to even less than quote a build what a buildable lot would go because the next change for that property most likely will not be a single family home. It will not be so I think there's there's inherent value in the property that the appraiser may not be recognizing. It's the value at that point in time, but if we reduce the lots in our town base below that. That is a concern that I have, and and I think that you know, a, a closer to the two hundred ninety four thousand, keeping the dwelling, giving a base value for the lot, which could probably it be incorporated in the commercial use of the adjoining properties or so forth. That is beyond me, uh, but overall, I think reducing the lot to below two hundred fifty thousand is just not uh, appropriate at that time. To Harold's point, we are. People who have lived in this town for a long time. So it's the inherent value that's maybe not recognized by um, a well qualified, well presented appraisal. This is Kathleen. I would just add to that, you know, again, the neighbor has a point one. So certainly if the neighbor hears that he can come back and we are granting people, you know, if Ross decides that yes, or we decide sort of, you know, we'll bring it down there, but he may bring it part way by giving the person more. You know, instead of point one for the highway, maybe they get point two for the highway, and that the neighbor, you know, would know that as well. That you know, we are really feeling that the highway in this area—it's not just the condition of the home, but the effect that the highway has. You know, it, it is not the value is not increasing there the way that it is in other neighborhoods. It's staying the same. Um, you know, because we did. Um, you know, that they're. I think I don't know if they're identical on the inside. Certainly, they seem very similar to me in terms of square footage, location, condition, you know, condition on the outside of the home. So I would have been more comfortable in the low threes, but, you know, 294 is pretty close to three. So um, I could have taken that under advisement. So yeah, change maybe, the motion, make a friendly amendment to the emotion, but John's got his hand up too. Hmm. 
Um, I'm looking at, at one of the comps here at 91 Henderson Road and their field card. Um, it was last sold, um, even though it was an unqualified sale um, at on uh, May of 20. And they do have, um, it is a different neighborhood code, and it's probably because the, I'm guessing that the neighborhood was split by the, the freeway. Um, the condition is um, 0.9. So there was a discount for that, and it looks like in the notes there were a highway um, discount um, that sold for three fifteen. And if I'm looking at it correctly, looks like they remodeled the kitchen um, back in July of twenty, and then there was a change for reinspection on September 30th of 20. Um, and I, I'm thinking that this may be one of the better comps that we have here. I could be wrong just because the adjustment is only uh, the net adjustment on the Henderson Road one. Well, that's 45,000. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong column. Um, the Pequot one is only 2,500. Yeah, the Pequot one is only 2,500. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm just throwing that out there, that one of the comps, which is nearby the Henderson one, um, that's only 0.34 miles away, mm -hmm. um, may help a little bit with the justification to bring it down. There's also the whole other consideration of, you know, rent, rent, just put, throwing it out there, not necessarily for this one, but that at some price, you know, these, these properties are rentable, even if they don't have a great sale value. So this may well be a rental property or an income property for him. So there is some income value to these homes, you know, um, as much as, you know, especially for the demand in the market these days. So just as we do consider going really low at some point, you know, does it make sense that this that rental income for these properties is is, a, is still a viable option? So. Would you rent that? Because I would. I wouldn't live in that. At the same time, in, in my know, opinion, a roof over your head is better than no roof at all. So I, I think I'd rather not have I, the roof. I don't. I don't, I don't think that we can always judge these properties by our personal standards. Um, <laughs> so I, I'd like to see if we can bring this to a vote. We have a motion on the table. Uh, we have it's seconded. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, that is correct. It was seconded by uh, Ronique. By and, yes. And so by uh, if there's no further comment. I'll ask for a show of hands. All those in favor of reducing uh, the uh, assessed value of this property, um, appeal number 583 to $294,400. Please raise your hand. I have one, two, three, four, five in favor. Uh, all imposed. Raise your hand. Uh, my hand's up, Harold and Paulette. I see Paulette's hand up as uh, denied, uh, denying the reduction. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five in favor. No abstentions, one denial. Yes. Thank you. True. Oh, and this is Kathleen. I would. I mean, unless people disagree with me, I would also ask Ross as he's adjusting this card, it may be an override, but to please consider, you know, reducing the location further than 0.1 for the highway so that that change stays on this property in perpetuity and doesn't bounce back at the next reval. This is Harold, very good point. Um, and if further reductions take place, uh, the homeowner will be notified of that. Further. Paul, still ready to hear from me? Slightly yeah. different. Okay. Doing great. You're doing great. Okay. All these newbies are doing awesome. And we have John still to go. So that's great. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Okay, so we're halfway done with South Pine Creek for me. Three out of Your six. input is there, invalid. Uh, was that invalid for me? Something came over? Yeah, I don't okay. know why it's doing that, but it, I don't know if somebody else is doing something. Oh, maybe they're trying to okay. chat and they can't or need to listen. Okay. Um, so the next, there are the next two that I want to take uh, to together, discuss separately. But the overriding will be that they were both purchased uh, this year. Uh, I'm sorry, they were both purchased in 2020. So um, let's see. Let let's take hearing number one three six. Joseph and Megan Neal um, from Nine Ludlow Court. Um, and there's a typo in my notes, which I will <laughs> correct. Oh, can great. you just state what they asking price and, you know, what right. the town has so, it and where they're going? Right. Thank you, Kathleen. They are requesting a reduction to 572,000 from the town's value of 640,600. Uh, both owners participated in person during the hearing. The subject property was purchased in May of 2020 for 650,000. After the purchase, two of their adjoining neighbors removed nearly 10 mature trees, exposing the subject property to the noise, views, lighting from I-95. So this is a uh, a street and a court, um, several homes along there. I don't know how many, maybe 30 you know, a good size neighborhood, quote unquote, good size. Um, but the property, it, the, the street and court are bordered by the train station parking lot, Mosswood condominiums. Uh, then there's the parking lot, the commuter lot for Fairfield, the, the house we just discussed in I-95. So this one, this is a true neighborhood that's nestled in among those more commercial developments. Uh, the removal of the trees, Definitely, you know, affected his uh, life. So that is why he's appealing for that uh, reduction. And he's also um, appealing because he did a, a, an analysis, which we don't, it's not comparable properties. But what he did was to take all the properties that sold from in 2020 around his sale price. I think there were 53 properties on his list um, selling for 575 to 750. And what it showed was that the town appraisal, the town value to the sales price ratio of these homes that were sold in the same year was 90%, 10% off of sales. His ratio is 98%. So given that, I am going to make a motion um, I want to make sure I have the right one here. Uh, I am making the motion to deny his appeal in full. However, I would also, I, I need a point of order on this. I would also like to raise to the uh, assessor that any property that is sold within the valuation year should not be town appraised for less than its purchase price. That's my emotion. John. Who's so this is John. Um, yes, I'm off mute now. Um, with the last, I, I think I agree with the with the motion to deny. Um, but I think that with the appraisal price uh, proposal that you have there, um, I'm just thinking that might screw with the model. A little bit or twisted around, but I could be wrong. Um, that would have to be something. And that's why I, I, 
I don't know if it's even legal to override the model, but I think um, the model would benefit by having actual sales price for the appraisal. In the year of the evaluation year. To go through these 53 properties, I, I don't know, even at 10%, that's, a, that's an enormous hit to the grand list. And this, uh, this new owner is really appealing for his reduction, not on sales comps, which is what we normally appeal on. He's appealing on his, he didn't get as much of a reduction off the sale price that the other 50 properties did. I'm not sure that's a valid appeal. I think he points out quite quite well that none of those people are going to come forward because they're all less than their appraisals and they're less than their purchase price. And the, the second part of his about the loss of the trees, um, that again is not really an appealable, uh, you know, it's not a decision for the appeal. Um, and part of me wants to deny deny in full because if there is an adjustment, I want him to be able to come back. And if we give him something, he won't be able to come back. So um, that also factors into my opinion. But I think he raises a very good point that uh, that's a tremendous impact to the grand list. And why would the model not benefit by actual timely data? Uh, this is Kathleen. I think his coefficient of dispersion would be zero if every sale price matched, right. if he appraised everyone at zero, unless he did it afterwards. But um, I'm assuming you're not motioning to to increase him to 650, which is what he paid I for. I am not. No. Okay. Because that, you know, <laughs> he's upset. Your he's at 8%. You know, his coefficient is only 1%. But I think in a year of a sale, there should be, for those properties, that should be a zero coefficient of dispersion. Yeah. I'm Carol? sorry. This is Harold. I'm interrupting on another point. I, I hear in the background uh, something is invalid, and I'm wondering if those are that's due to callers coming in on this line and being blocked. Does anyone have any ideas of that? That's it's what I thought. It's definitely coming in on the conference line, but I'm not sure why. Thank you, Prue. It's the public line. Yeah, this is Kathleen. Is anybody unmuted on the public line, Prue? No, no, no. Okay. just me. So that's a question for IT on, you know, next week. I'll put that on my IT list. Thank you. Is there a motion on the table? So the, the motion yeah. is to deny in full, and then the second motion would be, is that something that we raise as a motion? I need a point of order on the uh, valuation. I mean, this is Kathleen. I would just say that we always have a wrap up discussion at the end of the of, at the end of the period with the assessor, and that's probably the best time to um, you know have that kind of discussion with him. I don't know that it's our purview to tell him how to build his model. I think that's his job and the reval company's job. But again, that's a discussion we can have with him. You know, when we after we're done talking about all of these and and coming up with what we see and what we're hearing from the public, so that things can get better in the future. So, uh, we put that on the long term list. Oh, Sadie. <laughs> so, is anybody second Giff's motion, Catherine's motion? This is Kathleen. I'll second it. Uh, this is Harold. All, all those, any further discussion, first of all? Okay, all those in favor of Kat Catherine's motion, raise your hand. It is unanimous. Unanimous. One, two, three, okay. four, five, six in favor. No denials, no abstentions. Uh, moving along to the, uh, let's see. moving along, uh, my next presentation is on 55th, oh, uh, 55 Lee Drive, appeal number 136. We just did 136. No, that part's wrong. Hearing 64. You keep laughing, Maroney. It's very hard to keep track of all these numbers. Okay. 
<laughs> no worries. I had the same exact <laughs> Okay. Oh, I know where I got that wrong. Okay. All right. Now, so appeal number 64 for 55 Lee Drive, Christopher and Eliza Harris. They uh, they are requesting the town's value of their property is 763,900. They are asking for $700,000 valuation. Okay, the um, I was a little confused because they seem to have two town cards in there, but I'm going to go with the one that matches those numbers. And um, okay, so the again here they they purchased the property in May of 2020. They paid 730 thousand for the property due to COVID the access to the home was severely restricted for, mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. One, there was apparently a hoarding situation. The property had been on for a little bit of time. They actually had made their first offer in February, so pre-COVID. Uh, but they had a lot of trouble getting not only just access to the house, but access to see things in the house. So the home inspection, so forth, they still, they, they concluded the sale, they purchased it in March. However, the appraisal wasn't done until October. The appraisal came in at 700,000. So, um, and additional factors that they think impair the value of the property is that it is a two bedroom home, which is pretty small and uh, of limited market. And um, many of the fixtures and items that would normally remain with the property were removed um, just before closing. So, that being said, um, I am going to make a motion to reduce the value to the uh, what they paid, seven hundred and thirty thousand. So partial, right? Give a partial. Thank you, Rooney. Any question? Yes, all that. I'm, I'm just want to clarify. So they purchased it in what month? They, they saw it and came up with the, the purchase price in about February. They closed in May closed in and May. the appraisal okay. was not completed until October. Is that an appraisal? Was that an appraisal for the bank or was that, how could they, have it? Well, they didn't, but they purchased it in May. So that means they closed on it. So this appraisal and, uh, report. Yes. This appraisal report doesn't really have to do with that purchase. It's this was done later, just because like like a lot of people did to, to come I to the hearing. I think that was all updated because of COVID. That was my impression. They, they said the appraiser couldn't get in there because of the COVID restrictions. And oh. so really didn't see and prepare the property. Did we know if they paid cash for this property? I the do The reason not. I'm asking is because they did they had a mortgage. I don't, I didn't yeah. ask, okay. but that was my assumption in that it was just the, the bank took so long to get the appraiser back, the appraisal back because of the COVID restrictions. Oh, to get it back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it just seems odd to me. Like I've never known it the does. bank to give somebody the money without, without the appraisal. I can't it imagine does. any bank would do that. So, but. I don't know. I guess my uh, my thought on the appraisal is if it was that they purchased it for seven, whatever, um, but then got an appraisal when they did, because they couldn't do an appraisal when they purchased it because they couldn't get in. If they paid cash or whatever, then I could see where they're saying that they overpaid because the value isn't 736, it's 700 based on the appraisal. Normally, I would say we go with the purchase price, but I, this it's confusing to me. Well, that's why I am saying to go with the purchase price based on even my last discussion that I don't think anything that sells should be valued by the town at a lower price. If they paid 730, that's what they should be appraised at. And I agree with you 99% of the time, but if this was an issue of COVID and they actually didn't get their appraisal back in time, and so they overpaid, that, that they shouldn't have, that they might not have overpaid had they had the appraisal, then I'm a little bit more sympathetic, but I'm going to try to look it up. Um, and see what happened here. This is Harold. I, I think that Kathleen has a comment.
Uh, Kathleen, you may be muted. muted. Could you repeat? Yes, it looks like it's a 10 1 appraisal. So typically when it's done 10 1 and maybe it is a bank appraisal. We usually see that when it's a. When it's a uh, appeal appraisal, um, there are a couple comps on there for Fairfield place. I would say that. Uh, you know, I'm not an expert in that area, but Lee Drive, I did look at, you know, moving to there. That's a pretty desirable street. I would say that that's a better location than the two on Fairfield Place. I'm overhill. I'm trying to remember where that is, but Lee Drive, and there's a couple other there that are right off of, you know, uh, Oldfield Road to the south that are that are very nice dead end streets. Um, and, uh, you know, that's a nice neighborhood. Um, I would also point out that they, it appears that they negotiated their price of their home in February, which is pre COVID. Um, so the market was probably is, it was different when they were negotiating in February, certainly than it has been in everything else we've seen through the summer. And then the sec and the third thing is, is that at 730. They're not that far off of the 73900 and so. I'm, I, I think it's reasonably close given the time that, you know, they, they went to contract and market activity since then to say that I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't know that I would support a reduction of that amount given, you know, the difference one and two, the timing. Well, this is Harold. Uh I understand, I understand the point, but just an aside, the question was asked uh, if they had a mortgage or not. I believe in years past, just uh, to help the board members, uh, there is a site that you can go on, perhaps uh, you realtors, you might know it, to see if a property is mortgaged and what the terms of the mortgage was. That's public record. <clears throat> this is Paulette. Harold, you're right, but I actually found it on MLS. So they did get a mortgage. Um, so that appraisal, it's still, it just makes us, I guess, because of COVID, they'll, they'll do things they never used to do. But in, in May of 2020, they did buy it for 730. And that, that appraisal was most likely a bank appraisal for the purchase because they do have a mortgage and a pretty substantial one. So now they did put down, even though it's a big mortgage, 730, 84, 6, 4. Again, I, they, put down, they put down a lot of money. So my point is that, they did not have access to this appraisal when they purchased the house. Had they had it, they might not have paid that price. So they kind of got they kind of got screwed by the bank. But um, if the appraiser says that the value is seven hundred, and normally, like I said, I would go with the purchase price always. But in this case, there seems to be an extenuating circumstance. They had no idea that the property wasn't worth what they were paying for it until well, and they October. So now the appraiser says it's worth seven hundred. If they knew that, well, they had paid seven hundred. And that would be the value, what they paid. So in this case, I, I think, I don't know, I have a bit of feel, but I feel like they, they deserve a little bit of leeway only because of the way it was done. Well, and I'm still asking for a reduction in part to their purchase price. Right. This this is Kathleen. I think I'm seeing in the appraisal, Paulette, it's done for the pur purpose of estimating market value as of 10-1-2020. So I don't believe that's their bank appraisal. I believe that's their appeal appraisal if i'm reading it correctly the appraisal was not done for a bank if you look at the beginning it was done for the party um and it says the purpose of this appraisal is to estimate the market value of the property described in the body of this appraisal report um in accordance with that so and to conclusion that the market value as of 10 1 2020 is 700 thousand. and again he's using the two comps um you know, I, I, I'm not crazy about using Fairfield place as comps for, for this property. And I'm not the uh, overhill property is it what was sold for 750. I, I'm having a hard time finding the dates in March as well. So that was an, you know, that was an earlier sale. Um, if he's trying to get to 10, one, I would. You know, like to see these ones that are a little bit later, like the 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 uh, June's and July's. But again, those ones are on Fairfield Place. They're not on. You know, I I I would make location adjustments for those, and perhaps he did. I'm just not seeing that. I'm not sure our role is to reevaluate the appraisal. I think our role is to see if they if their town appraisal is substantiated by sales 
including their own on the same subject property. I think we're getting into the weeds. I'm so sorry, my, I probably, I think I, I'd like I, think I to, misunderstood. Nope, I think nope, I, misunderstood. I would like to just restate my, uh, my proposal, my motion to um, reduce, to grant in part a reduction to their purchase price of $730,000. This is second, second okay. the motion. Okay. Any further discussion? This is Kathleen. I would. I just want to make the comment that you know they they paid seven thirty back then. If they were to put it on the market today, do you think that they would put it back on? Or in October, would they have put it back on at seven thirty? Maybe they would have if they overpaid. But I'm I'm I'm, I'm not. I'm not confident that that would have been what they would have done, but. Any further comment? Then with a raise of hands, uh, do we approve? Are we in favor of a to be grant to grant in part a reduction to the purchase price of $730,000? Raise your hands. Paulette? Uh, no, I'm not raising my hand. Thank you. I have three uh, for approval and I have three for denial. Is that correct? Yes. Raise your hands if you approve and raise your hands if you, you deny. And Paulette? You raise, are you oh, raising sorry, your hand? I not, yes, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. My mistake. Thank I you. My hand to, uh, the sorry. vote is three in favor of approving in part to a reduction of $730,000 and three denying the appeal. This is Kathleen. Yeah, I don't know that we've ever not that we've ever had an even number. I know the motion fails with a three three. You need a majority to pass it. And if anybody listened to the FOI, maybe you can tell. And in this case, we do need to make a decision. I don't know if because the motion failed and there's no second motion on the table to any other value. I don't. I mean, that's a good question. I I think it just becomes denied because we didn't do anything. But, but there was never a, you know, and I mean, we, there was never a majority vote to deny either. So I think, I mean, unless Prue can weigh in on that, we'll have, you know, in this case, uh, we I have know, to make I'm a decision. I'm trying to look it up. Yeah, we have to make a decision, right? Most of the times, if you're like proposing something new and it fails, it just fails. But because we have to decide, <laughs> I, I think, I think it was, you know, I, again, I could put a motion on the table to deny it and then that would fail 3-3. Three, three, so. I, you know, I'm pretty sure it, they don't get it, but just Prue, if you want to either look it up when you have a minute or put it in the notes, if we need to revisit it at another time, we can, but I think, I think that's how it's it goes. A, it's a, yeah. Tie vote fails. Yes. Yeah. That I know it's just, is that, you know, I guess that's our final decision. Oh. I just don't know how you record that. Maybe you just record it as a proven part and the yeah. vote was three, three. So the motion failed. Yeah. Right. Motion failed. I just don't know if we're going to have to revisit it again because it failed. I don't, I don't know. Right. Do we have, does it have to pass eventually at some, at some vote? That's what we get for having an even number, right? <laughs> I know. Four of the five. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. That's a Robert Rolls question. Well, well it, you know, and also because these are decisions that have to be made, I'm sure it's happened in zoning before. So um, it's just, uh, I, I think it, I think it fails, but you know, I think, it, I think that's a denial, but I just want to make sure it's recorded a, appropriately. Prue, and we do the minutes. Uh, this is okay. how thank you, Kathleen, for uh, pointing that out. Well, we have about another hour to go, I believe. And so I have one more. Did you? Uh, Catherine has one more. Please Before proceed. Before we take a break or. No, Anybody I think we can. I'm ready to go for it. We can we muscle won't. through it. All right, let's muscle through the last one. Okay. Um, this is number uh, hearing. Whoop, let me call up the. Your right. input is invalid. 
think they're trying to talk. Uh, oh no, I lost my other one. Catherine, so it's, it's nothing. It's it, nothing personal when they say your input's invalid. <laughs> we're we're hearing number seventy six. Address number was that seventy six. Did I get that one right? I have two on South Street. That's my confusion. I want to do two 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 South Street. That, that's yeah, that's that's you're right. Did I get it? Okay, and then just let me pull up the uh, the scans, which boy, the assessor's office has done a phenomenal job of making all this paperwork available at a at a click. It really does help. Um, what did I, I, I apologize. I'm still doing the wrong click. Okay, here I have it. Okay, so number 222 South Street, appeal number 76. Owned by uh, Damien Roy, I'm sorry, Damien Roy and Emily Lombard. The um, the town has a value of one million four fifty five six hundred thousand. The appellant is asking for a market value of uh, one million three. They have um, an appraisal was done. Let's see. So it is an it was a new build in 2018. And they paid 1,350,000 for it. This is Harold. Could I have the appeal number again? Uh, 76. Thank you. Um, a professionally prepared uh, appraisal dated February of 2020 valued the property at 1,380,000. And because several of the comps, while valid for the appraisal, were uh, a bit old, uh, Mr. Roy presented three additional comps. They are all new builds, well within the uh, neighborhood that he's speaking of. The uh, the biggest difference between those and his is he has a uh, 3,400 square foot house that would be two years old. And the ones that are being built now are um, significantly larger. Most are 4,800 square feet. And as you can see, I did insert the, um, they are selling, so it's 86 Flax Road, 4,750 4, square feet for 1,275,000. And 454 South Pine Creek Road with 4,531 square feet sold for 1,175,000. Uh, Mr. Roy also put together a list of all the properties on his street and that showed that the land values, all except one, increased 18%. Um, and while most home values depreciated at 10 to 16%, four of the properties had increases, including his, at 3%. So, um, my original motion, I guess I'm just such a moderate, I still want to uh, compromise. A, a, a two-year-old home is not going to depreciate as quickly as the other homes on the street. So I, I can understand why his, uh, you know, his improvements would not have been depreciated 10% or more. However, I'm not quite sure why they were um, increased especially in lieu of the new construction that is available. So um, I, thinking it through, um, I lean towards going with the appraisal amount of 1,380,000. And that would be my documented reason for the reduction to match the appraisal. And that would be my motion. Oh, this is Harold. Any discussion or comment? This is Kathleen. I'll second it for discussion. So you've got a motion on the table. So I'm happy to uh, second the motion. We have a second uh, on Kathleen's motion. Um, sure. It's Paulette. I just I just have a question, just so I'm clear on how we're doing these things, because it seems to be a discrepancy. So now it's okay to use the appraisal because it actually ends up to be more than what uh, he's asking for. So that's fine. We couldn't use it any other time, but nobody has a question about this appraisal because it's actually more than what he's, you know, he, he wants. So I guess that's what we'll do from now on. Okay, whatever. 
I got it. I'm good. I think uh, his appraisal would use the appraisal that was given had properties that were slightly outside of the uh, the time frame that we were supposed to be using. However, the, unfortunately, there were really no new comps. I mean, the comps are so significantly larger and at a much reduced price. So, given the option of he did not ask us to reduce the price as low as the larger comps that have sold during COVID. Uh, this is Harold uh, Paulette. Does that? Uh... I'm, I'm okay with the mark. I have no problem with the appraisal. I'm okay. fine with it. I'm just saying I, I, that we have never used the appraisals before, but now we are. And I don't understand if these if these comps are outdated, then I'm just confused on I'm trying to get a rhythm of how we do things, what our guidelines are, and I'm not seeing it. So I agree to accept the appraisal, but I don't know why everybody else is. I'm the one who usually agrees to take it. This is Harold. And uh, you know, we're we're really only two sessions into our deliberations of over 600 properties. Uh, I think uh, we're trying to be consistent. We're not creating rules that we have to follow in every instance. So uh, I would suggest that uh, we don't make uh, it a rule to always go with the appraisal, even though it might be current to the October 1st, 2020 uh, revaluation period. So we have a motion, we have it's a second. Uh, with a raise of hands, I'd like to ask uh, for a vote. Oh, I just, I just, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still looking through the comp, his two new comps, Catherine. Did you say they were Flax Road and 454 South Road? Flax Road? Is uh, this a is Harold. I'm sorry. I, foot. Sorry, sorry, Harold. Uh, I'm sorry to Kat, Kathleen. Uh, I thought you were motioning uh, to second Catherine's. Motion. Uh, I had. Oh, okay. I had motioned it before. Oh, I just. Very good. We have a further discussion. Yes. Um. Thank you. I just was uh, asking Paulette. He brought it, Catherine. If I hear you correctly, he brought in two more recent sales than what was in his appraisal, and yes. those values are both lower than what was in his appraisal report. Well, and I, seven. Twelve seventy five and eleven seventy five. Right. And so, um, Paulette. Can you explain why? Do you know the neighborhoods enough to know that Flax Road or 454 South Pine Creek, would those be good comparables for the 222 South Street new construction? Flax would be because it's right, it's right around the corner, basically. Um, okay. You know, Flax, mm -hmm. Lee, and well, Flax is around the corner on the other side of the street, but it's basically in the same neighborhood. Okay. Um, but I, th I would say that South Street values, I think, are higher. Um, I, I, you know, if the appraiser used it as a comp, then I would be okay with it because he's making adjustments to, to try to equal things out. But for a homeowner to do it and say that they're the same, they're not. Because he doesn't have the ability to, to accurately d just determine how much, how, how it, if the values are similar. It's a different street. Flax has a mishmash of houses, a lot of newer construction, but a lot of older capes. Um, what's this on South? Where are we here? Yes. South, the, South Street. The homeowner presented the, the two. Presented. It backs it, it backs up to um, uh, Sasco Hill, and it's it's a it's a more valuable area. It's a little more valuable, so I don't think I would use his comps. No, he Thank presented you. comps for to have them as twenty twenty sales because his appraisal was done with earlier in the year, and the comps were actually outside of the uh, time. I think they were from August of twenty nineteen. Wait. Right. So, so this is Kathleen. So the so the appraisal, um, you know, it looks like there's a house very close. Twenty on his appraisal number two. The the first comp is twenty on the, on the official appraisal. The comp is twenty six South Street, and and the the subject property is two twenty two South Street. Um, that sale price was a million five, um, and the appraiser adjusted it down to a million three eighty six. So even though it's outside the reval prop, you know, period, it's probably relatively similar, assuming they were both built about the same time. Is that right? The square footage on the 26 South Street, the site's a little bigger. I'm having hard, I don't know why I have such a hard time reading these appraisals. 
Uh, the subject know. property is 3392. The uh, the 20 South Streets property is 3300 square feet. So they're about the same size. Eight eight total eight rooms, four bedrooms, three and a half baths. So even though it's an older comp, it's virtually the same house, and it was appraised, you know, uh, a little before the reval period, but for 1386 after adjustments because it sold for 1536. So, and they, they want, and they're at 1455 right now. So, that's I mean, correct. I guess I would have to take the 1386530. And I mean, I think that's a really good, you know, comp for them um, and bring it up because of COVID and time. That's sort of what I'm doing in my head. And how close, you know, do I get above a million four when I do that? Probably. Do I get it to a million four, five, five? I, I'm not sure that the date of that sale was an 18. Yeah, and the neighbor bought theirs, it looks like 813. Yeah, so they were sold within a month of each other. And when, you know, I think we're hearing like, you know, the new builds, his was a new build in 2018, absolutely. But now he's up against new builds. So you're not the newest and the new builds are selling significantly less for a lot more square footage. So it's just that's where he's saying the market is not necessarily going up for his. Although it was COVID, we agree, but that's why I right. took the appraisal this, number. This is John. I have a question um, about that comparable sale on 26 South Street that we're looking at. Um, what's the difference between a condition one and a condition two that dropped the value 150,000 in the appraisal? Does anybody have any idea about that? I think it's the new 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 build. Okay. I, when was 26 built? I think that would have been a year newer. Hey. 26. This is Kathleen. It looks like they sold within a week, you know, two weeks of each other. This is Harold. Uh, just for point of information, I'd like to point out on those that are looking at card, or maybe uh, we can see that this was an unqualified sale. But that sign, that sometimes appears when the owner has purchased it directly from the builder. And in this instance, we can see that the builder owned the property previously, and it appears that uh, the owner purchased from the builder. That's why it's an unqualified sale, but that does not necessarily, uh, uh, it, it's not necessarily a derogatory to the sale. Thank you, and I believe these were all teardowns and rebuilds. Yes. The subject property. So I think to answer your question, John, I think the condition one, condition two is brand new. I, I think that's it, yeah. So his was the 2018 and then a year later, 2019 it sold. A new one sold. Okay, thank you. And they depreciate 10% a year the first year. It's like, that's what the appraisal say. What is it, 1% a month, something like that. Hmm, actually the 26, oh yeah, the 26 South Street sold in uh, June of 19. For a one million five thirty six, a year later than the purchase of and the, the subject, subject property, property. Mm -hmm. maybe the appraisal. I didn't read it right. So I'm sorry. I think there is a motion on the. Uh, I'm I'm done with my questions. I think. Anybody else? Or so then the motion is. Do we reduce the property to uh, the appraisal amount of one million uh, three eighty? Granted in part. Was I'm sorry. Was it one million three even or one million three eighty six? What was the appraisal? The appellant would like a million three even. The appraiser is at a million three. Where's the appraisal? A million three eighty. 
and the town has it at 1455. I've made the motion to reduce, uh, to approve in part, grant in part to the appraised value of 1380. Of $1,380,000, is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Uh, by a show of hands, all those well, in favor. Wait, I'll second the motion. Or do we already have you already did Kathleen? Okay, I think sorry. I did. Thank you. Uh, this is Harold. Uh, with a show of hands, uh, I'd like to see all in favor of granting in part a reduction to one million three hundred eighty thousand dollars. I have one, two, three, four in favor of reduction. All those opposed, raise your hand. Two opposed. Two opposed. The motion is carried with a vote of four in favor of the uh, reduction in part to one million three hundred eighty thousand dollars, and two opposed. I think uh, Kathleen, you're. Yeah, I know my favorite phrase. Um, I you just have to read into the record who is opposed because I don't think the public can hear that vote. So. You know, we could either go to the roll or else you could just not say who was in favor. You could just say who was opposed and it, the minutes will show who else, who was in favor. Uh, Prue, for the record, could you indicate who was opposed to uh, this reduction part? Yes, um, uh, Paulette Cuso and Kathleen Griffin. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Good job, Catherine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is Hi. Kathleen. Now I do have a couple in that neighborhood, but John has not. If I'm unless my memory is failing me, John has not had the opportunity to do any. I believe he had one property. I think you indicated, John, you have at least one property in Southport that you felt confident that you wanted to. Um, there's a. There's actually a couple in Southport that I could do. Okay. Here. Um, and and just if we want to move I'm, to that. Yeah. I'm, I'm coming back. I'm going to hear you, but I'm going to make myself a coffee. If you don't mind. And then I will be right back to here. Okay. Oh, I'm, make, make us all a coffee. Oh, I <laughs> wish I could. So I'll, I'll be off video, but I'll be listening so I can still make the form. Very good. You're recognized. Uh, John. Okay. You're, you're thrown under the bus. Okay. That's fine. Um, all right. Uh, one I'd like to present right now is uh, appeal number 434. It is property address of 1011 Pequot Avenue. The owner is Gunston Holdings, and it was uh, the appellant um, on behalf of Gunston Holdings was Chris Russo, attorney Chris Russo. Okay. Um, and Paulette, I may need your help here with this for the MLS data. Okay, um, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yep. I, I didn't get. I got confused with the the appeal number. I'm trying to look it up. Yep. Okay. Um, Which one is it? This is uh, 101 Pequot Avenue. Okay. Okay. The town assessed value. Excuse me, John. Excuse uh, me, John. I think it's 1011. At least 1011. That's what I got. 1011. Yes, 1011. And the appeal number was? 434. Okay, I had the wrong one. Okay. Okay. Right. So the town has it valued at $2,765,600. The requested value is $2,650,000. Um, so the attorney Russo showed us the, and I don't think it's in yet, uh, was scanned in yet since this was a Friday one and not all my documents got scanned in. But the um, the contract to be sold was in October of 2020 for $2,650,000. So that's the requested value. Um, it closed in January of 2021. Um, there is a small discount on the land um, already. 
uh, and they did already go through an informal hearing with uh, with municipal valuation services, um, which did drop the value a little bit on that. Um, so basically, I don't know, uh, Paulette, can you, with the MLS data, can you see that it was entered into contract in October of 2020? I can, hang on. While uh, Paulette's doing that, are there any other questions? Uh, this is Harold. Uh, so, looking at the data that's currently on file, it appears that the uh, uh, vision card has not been updated. Is that correct? Or it has? Uh, no, sorry, I take that back. It has been corrected. Yes. Yes. Okay. I take it back. Go ahead, Kathleen. You're on mute. This is my question. I'm sorry. Um, what was the case that attorney Russo presented? Did, did you state what he said as the reason for the appeal? The reason the appeal is, is that the contract was, was agreed upon in October of 2020. Okay. For 2.65 million, um, which is at the time of the valuation period and did. So that's why he's asking for the sales price instead of what the town valued it at, even though it didn't close until January of 2021. So really there wouldn't be any um, time adjustment for appreciation in the value based on the evaluation period. And are we waiting for Paulette to, for her evaluation before we make a motion? Yeah, it, uh, it, closed yep. for, it closed for what they said, 2650. And when did it close on? Closed on February 1st. Well, let me see when that, let me make sure because sometimes it's it's not exactly what, okay. Closed on February 3rd, 2021. Okay. And when did it go under contract? Does that October say October 19th, 20? Okay. October 19th, 2020. Now let's give that a few days on either side because they don't always it, it goes in there when they report it. Sometimes they lie, but it's probably close to it. Okay. So I would, uh, is there any other discussion before I make a motion? Yes, Kathleen. Was this a qualified sale? Because I see the name as Jack and Fran and then what am I? Oh, oh, that's the old card. Is that why? Is me and the new owner? Uh, what I just see who the new owner is. Hold on. I, I see the owner. I'm looking at the ownership history if I have the right card and it looks like it's a family. It's you know, a, look the at owner the is. The owner is Gunston Holdings LLC. That okay. was what was presented. So it's a separate, it's a separate family than the me and transfers. Yeah, I see a 2016 sale price was zero. Okay, so that was a family. So it is a new, it's a new owner. I've just got an old card. Uh, this is Harold. On, on the card, it does say that Jack, me and, and Francis A are trustees. Uh, for the property at 1011 Pequot Avenue. So perhaps that is where the name of the current owner comes from. That being the, uh, uh, what was it? Gunston, Gunston Holding LLC. We'll see. Uh, this is Kathleen. How, Paulette, how long was that property on the market? Uh, let me go back. It was on the market. I think it was on the quite a while. Let me look. Let me go back to the okay. listing. So, I'm assuming this is a 278 days this time. Let me go back into the history. Uh, okay, it went on the market on 11520 for 2,998,000. They dropped the price. Oh no, they never dropped the price. It went under deposit um, and it sold for it went on deposit, like I said, they have 101920 and then it sold for 2650. And I'll I'll share my screen here um, hopefully see if this works. All right. Are you guys able to see the contract here that was entered in? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. But the the contract is uh in the file. Is in the file. It's there now, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And you'll see here uh doesn't have the day of October of 2020, but um Jack Meehan 
and trustee of that to looks like Dever, Forrest Warner, and Sophia Warner, okay, of Hoboken, New Jersey. And you'll see here that the value they paid um, of 2.65 million on that. There should be a there should be a date on that contract somewhere where they signed off on it. Uh, yeah, I, I I was looking for that date too. Uh, well, I couldn't find it. I did see a, a specification saying that uh, they would proceed, uh, assuming that a swimming pool could be built uh, uh, by uh, ten twenty six of twenty twenty. And that's in paragraph uh, 42, a municipal contingency down towards the end. Right here. Paragraph Buyer's eight. obligations are contingent upon a buyer obtaining reasonably satisfactory title and reasonably satisfactory searches. But you and said you B. Item E. E. As in Edward. There we go. Yep. I don't see a signature date. Per se, or nobody signed the last page. I mean, nobody dated the last page. There's huh. a sign, but there's a date assigned to that signature. No date. Well, then we'll go with the MLS because usually what happens is I said they lied. I shouldn't have said it that way. Sometimes they do, but in some most cases, people go in to sign the contract, and we don't always know that the day it happens. We find out two or three days later. So it probably yeah. happened on that day or slightly before. Uh, the the. Uh... Contract even in the first line agreement made as of the blank day of October 2020. So correct. There is no date there as well. Interesting. Is there a motion on the table? Not yet. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm, I'm working my way there. I want to go one for one like here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there any more discussion on this before I make a motion? All right, if not, I'd like to make a motion to uh, grant the full request value of 2.2, or I'm sorry, 2.65 million for this property as it was sold in October of 2020 for that value. This is Harold. Do I have a second to? I will. Uh, Catherine Giff will second. Catherine has seconded. This so is Kathleen. Just to confirm, that's a hundred thousand dollar reduction on a two point seven million dollar home. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Just about a little bit more than that. Hundred and fifteen thousand. Okay. All right. With the show of hands, all those in favor. A uh, reduction to the two million. What was it? Six hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Show your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six. The vote is unanimous. Unanimous to reduce to the pellets a requested uh, market value of two million six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Oh, you know what? This this is Kathleen. I'm I'm gonna sorry. I'm gonna change my vote. I'm gonna vote no. Sorry about that. I I did my math here. I'm I'm just I'm good. I'm gonna vote no. All right. All right. The motion is carried. Five votes in favor. No abstentions uh, and one vote against. Motion is carried. John. Okay, um, next 1, I just want to check the file very quickly to see if all the documents have gotten in there. Uh, if not, I, I would present a different 1. It's loading. Okay. Uh, my next one will be appeal number 54. 
and that is of 163 Harbor Road. It was uh, the owner and appellant is Deborah Juddelson. The town has the parcel or has the um, property town value of $1,425,700. The requested value is 1,315,000. Okay. Um, and again, Paulette, I'm going to probably need your help with this 1. Um, okay. as far as getting the dates together. Uh, with when, when things happened, um, and such, um, this house, um, and I can share my screen. Again, okay, hopefully that is going okay. All right, so, um, the appellant, uh, said the house was sold or closed on October 1st of 2020. The requested value is the price sold, um, that they're asking for here. Um, if assessed value is correct, um, or the offer, or I'm sorry, if the assessed value is correct, it would have been sold for higher, um, and earlier, uh, I believe in the market history, which actually is right here. Let me just flip it around. Hopefully nobody's getting, um, dizzy here. Okay. But what we got here is, is that when it closed on 10, 1, 20, um, it looks like it went under deposit or the deposit was made on, uh, 9, 28, 20. Um, but from what the appellant presented here, uh, it was originally listed at 1.885 million back in 19. They had some price decreases um, over time. It went down to 1.449 million um, in May. And then there was another decrease of 100,000 from that of 1.349 in July. Okay. Um, I'm guessing, and uh, if somebody could help me here about the change details, but the A to the SH probably means that that's when they agreed to the the price, correct? That's correct. When it went, because it had been that SH is that it's under deposit. Um, it, it's buying, okay. That's a different way of saying it. But um, okay. way back in in nineteen in two thousand nineteen, it it did that once, and then it went back on the market. So that yep. there you see it there, and then the next set where they reduced the price. So yes, it went it went um. Somebody put an somebody had an accepted offer on it on that date. Eight accepted. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then it so, went to contract where you see deposit D. That's when it yep. goes to contract. Okay. And then it closed a few days later. Yeah. Here. So um so that is they're saying that if it was the if the town value was correct, uh it would have probably been sold sometime between the May price here and the July price when it went down to 1349. Um, another thing that they they wanted to point out is is that the um, on the property the dock uh, is sinking and the seawall needs repair. Um, they felt that the appraisal for the loan didn't have good comps. Uh, however, the land was overvalued. Um, by the town, um, whereas the house wasn't, um, they kind of felt that the proportion of land to house, as far as the value goes, was not right with the land being too high. Um, the land is also uh, in two flood zones um, that they, they stated in that. Uh, they also talked about an ocean view about on the card. I think it says that they have an ocean view. Um, and I can pull that up here. Envision government. 
Um, however, they said they don't really have an ocean view from where the land is. Let's go here. This is Harold. Um, yep. I just want to mention, and Kathleen, maybe you can help me remember too. Was was this uh, property appealed last year? I think it was. This is the one that uh, is on the point just before the bridge that crosses the Mill River. That's oh, right. Correct. Yeah, she she did appeal it. I believe it. I believe the homeowner was a woman. Um, appealed it, and she received a reduction. Uh, last a, a year ago in March, I see that on the card change BAA 318 2020. So, yes, that's correct. Okay, we don't know what that reduction was at that time. This is Kathleen. I'm not. I've, I've pulled up the field card at this point, and I don't see that there. I mean, I see there was a 17. BAA reduction here um, with that. No, I, uh, this is Harold. I don't see the uh, 2017 reduction. Oh, wait, I'm looking at the wrong one here. Okay, Silly that me. explains. Yeah, <laughs> you're not the only one having senior moments, Harold. <laughs> That's right. There's what, 21,000 field cards? So, you know, the odds of getting the wrong one is um, pretty good. I'm I'm still stuck on the last property. I need Harbor, not Pequot. Yes, yeah. John. In in the uh, I don't know if you have my spreadsheet up, but if you click on <laughs> the the PID in the spreadsheet, it will take you right to the field card. See the PID column there? Yeah. Yeah. If you click on the PID, you don't have a or put your filter on. But the second column over there is the property ID number. So yep. if you click on that, that will take you to, it should take you to the field card quickly. Okay. Yeah. So you don't have to search. All right. There's the right property. So. This is Kathleen. Yep. I, I remember having a conversation with Ross, something about appeals that were granted in 2020 never made it into vision i believe i was looking at some other you know to look to see if some of the people that we appeal that bounced back and for some reason i feel like it i don't know why it would never get in the system but maybe it didn't so that's why if you look at her full card you know the other card not this card because the, the the paper card or whatever you call it that will show 2019 and 18 numbers on it and it's not changing from 18 to 19. And if we granted her last year, the 18 to 19 reduction should be showing and it's not. So I think they just either never got, the people got the tax breaks, I believe, but he said something about it just never got in vision. It probably just went right to the tax collector. So we, from this, I can't tell, I could go to our, you know, I'd have to find the minutes from last year to see what we reduced her to, but I know, I do remember, and it says change, so I know we brought it down. Uh, this is Harold. Yes, it's too bad we don't have that information because I, know. I think we did discuss the fact that that point of land that you can see on the mapping that's included here. Right here the, on page 20 or 14 of 20. Yep. Uh, yeah, that it does show um, a piece of land that is not buildable and uh, that uh, is impacted by the bridge across the Mill River, um, Harbor, Harbor Road continues across that, that bridge. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if there was some issue with the uh, property. I don't remember if this had to do with the water company having rights to this land or not. There is, I believe on the field card here, um, there is a size adjustment of 0.9 and a condition let me just make sure i'm on the right one yes i am so actually the condition is 0.6 for the property um size adjustment of 0.9 right so this is kathleen so you can see a 0.6 condition factor um mm -hmm. will definitely remember we saw the 0.9 for the traffic that's how sometimes ross will use that you know or the appraisers or whatever I mean, 
vision is used by most of the most towns in Connecticut as well as Massachusetts. So it's same software, but they tend to use that condition factor to um, put hardships on a particular property. You don't see a condition factor across a whole neighborhood. You might see it across a few homes, but in this case, he probably put that on. We probably put that on there last year to reduce the value of that land so that that particular lot is not valued like all the other waterfront properties, you know, on Harbor Road and South Fork because it is right at the bridge. It's an awkward shape lot. You know, it has those easements, you know, it has a, a variety of things going on it. So that's yeah. probably why that land value, even though the location adjustment, you know, it is Harbor Road waterfront. Um, she will that card appears differently than the neighbor's card because of that condition factor of 0.6. That's a significant condition. So he that's probably what he did to reduce that card. So I just I, I don't think we're seeing the value for whatever reason. I I don't know. I could be wrong. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, no, if you look in the assessed, it went from a million seven to set. Well, that's never mind. That's 19, 19 to 20. Was it a million seven? I don't know. My eyes are getting tired. Anyway, um, they bought the property. It seems like it was on the market for a, a long time. I, I see a significant difference between what the town has it as and what it sold for, which is what they're asking for. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, these are the kinds of adjustments where I'm comfortable definitely with them, you know, with the market value here, even though it's a somewhat unique property. Um, I believe, you know, it seems like it was an arm's length transaction. It's out on the market for a long time. It is a you know more awkward property, and and the sale price appears to be reflecting you know an appropriate value, very close to uh, you know or do it close on October one? Yeah. Uh, yes, it, it closed on October one. Yeah, it's it's a big difference, right? Million four to a million three. It's over. You know. This is Carol. There was also there was also a reduction of almost eighty nine thousand dollars between uh, uh, if they went to an informal hearing. Uh, uh, on the uh, to the current uh, before the informal hearing, perhaps it was one uh, assessed at one oh eight nine two right two zero, and it went down to nine nine seven nine 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 zero. Oh, I see. I, I was thinking it was a million dollar difference. Never mind. It's but it's one hundred and twenty thousand still now. Right. That's what we're saying. Okay, between the sale price and and what she wants on a million dollar property. Okay, that's sold at the reval. Right. I mean, it does seem like there is some hardship on this property. Uh, however, that has also been, you know, with the condition here that we're talking about, mm -hmm. um, that's been made as well as the the size adjustment with it um this is paulette i guess i'm getting yep. tired but um i i went back i went into the mls so now i'm out of the board of our our, our list just refresh my memory is she asking us to reduce it to what she paid or is she looking for a further reduction she's looking for it to what she paid okay then why aren't we just giving it to her since it was october 1st 2020 it, what she paid on that day can't get any closer to our periods is what it was, what is what it's worth. That's the market value. I don't see what the, I don't see where there's an issue with this. And that, and that's the main point of the appellants. Yeah, that this is that. yeah. And she, and she made a clear case. She showed us all the market data. She saw the, she showed the reductions in the prices. She showed us how that all happened, that it came on the market. It went off the market. So I think, it, you know, in, in a re, even in the, Pre COVID, it was going on and off. So I think she definitely proved to us that this is a qualified sale that she paid accurately. There was nothing, you know, about it. So, I mean, I, I, if there's a motion on the table, I to 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 approve this, I would be, um, I would be voting for it. In that case, I would like to make a motion that we uh, approve the full request value. Um, and lower the value down to one million three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, this is Harold. Do we have a second? I'll second it. It's seconded by Kathleen, and uh, by a show of hands, 
All those in favor of reducing to the opinion of the appellate, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. My hand's up. Yes, I saw it. And Ronique? I'm, are you no, I'm voting uh, against? Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five in favor and one opposed. And that proposal comes from Ronique Patel. No abstentions. Okay. Should we stick with me? Yes, I think we have time for. We got 15 minutes left. 15 minutes. Can yes. I can I go out of the Harbor Road area and do one that I think will be fairly quickly? Please do. All right. Uh, the next one I want to present is going to be appeal number five four three. Okay. I'm going to bring it up here on the screen. I'm trying to match Ronique's skills here as far as presenting with WebEx here. Oh, um, am, this is Harold. I am fine. seeing your screen. <laughs> Appeal okay, fine. good. All right. So this was presented by Valerie Ratner um, on Roland Road. That property is 672 Roland Road. The owners are Eric and Valerie Ratner. The town value um, is $1.302,900,000. The requested value is $1.1,000,000. Okay. And I'm going to just walk you through um, here uh, the reason of appeal. Um, they said, due to desperate situations, we overpaid for our house. It is 86 years old, under 2,500 square feet. Okay. Um, and they feel that they are the highest praised house, um, including um, their neighbors. So if I go down here, this is what she presented of comps per town of Fairfield for or as her comps. So this is the appealing record here or pre, uh, 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 the property in question. So 715 Roland was uh, either, uh, these two here were either new or renovated post Sandy. Um, I think, I believe, and then down here, we have more comps that, um, 664 Roland was raised up after Sandy. 743 Roland is very similar to the subject property, as is 664. Um, you can see by the square footage, um, bedrooms, baths, years built, etc. The town appraisal is is different. It's lower. Okay, uh, and what she's saying here is is that. Uh, these two that were newly renovated um, or renovated post Sandy are bigger. They have more bathrooms um, and again are newer, but yet still have a town appraisal that is lower than hers. Um, the, she did do an informal valuation with um, MVS and they did drop it a little bit, but it was more um, based on the pool. Uh, originally they had her uh, property as an in-ground pool. Um, however, it was, an, it was not an in-ground pool. It was an above ground pool, vinyl pool, which they did adjusted. Um, as far as this goes, unfortunately, I don't see these are, were not sold recently um, and there were no comps to this uh, that had sold in the last year that were presented um, with this. Excuse me, when was this, when did she buy her house? 
She bought her house five years ago, I believe, according to the oh. record here, 2015. Oh, that's different then, okay. For 1.4 million. Hmm. Uh. Okay. Um, so I am inclined or I am thinking that this would be, this appeal would be denied just because there were no comps sold um, and we're using the neighbors here, valuations here, which may or may not be right. But um, since there's no sold data involved or that was presented, I'm, I'm thinking of declining. I'll second this that. Is this is Paulette. Oh. Oh, this is Paulette. I have a question. Yeah. Why is it not okay to use these? Um, it's the neighbor stuff again. When we just made a decision, a few I don't know how many motion, how many appeals ago that we were able to use it when we wanted to. So why can't we use it now? We based the decision a few appeals ago on uh, on neighborhood information, and now we're not. So I'm not I'm not really sure why. I mean, I get confused when we do that because I think it's if we're going to do it once, then if we're going to allow it, then we allow it. If we don't, we don't. We just need to find find a way to do it. Uh, this is Harold. Uh, again, I, I think we, we need to take each situation independently. If you have the specifics to the prior appeal uh, and if you, you would like us to revisit that uh, for our own edification, we can do that. But again, we need to deal with each case independently and make our determinations based upon the information that we have at hand. So we're going to we're going to so we're going to say that this is this is not acceptable. We're going to deny, deny the appeal. When again, we didn't do that before. Now I understand that each case is separate. Yes, each case is separate when you look at the situation of the house. This is a blatant switch of of a procedure that we're going to end up in court for someday if we keep doing this. And I personally do not want to be the one in court, having been there before. So I don't think I need to go again. It's unfair to the homeowner if this is what we're going to do. We pick and choose when it suits us. That is wrong. Uh, this this is Kathleen Harold. If I can be recognized, uh, I'm not, Paulette, I'm not sure you're understanding what John was saying. I think what he's saying is when they're when when this particular petition is referencing comps, those aren't sales comps. Those are just other properties on Roland Road. So in other words, they're taking a list of all the properties on Roland Road. And comparing, you know, the numbers, bedrooms, baths on on that property to say to what the town has them at, and she's comparing herself to her neighbors' as appraisals. And and what we've, I believe, we've been pretty much saying. I'm trying to think if we at one point we didn't do this. It was that, you know, the neighbor may be too low. We don't know that. We're trying to figure out if you are at market value October 2020, right? That's what we're trying to get to because I, I have heard several on Roland Road and I'm hearing the same story. My neighbor's on Roland Road. How come I'm here and my neighbor is here? But they're not, you know, I, only, I, I think I only was given one sale to look at and then I can compare that property to the sale. But I, because, you know, there may be, who knows what's going on there, but there's a lot of comparing the, what the town has my neighbor at to me and I want to be fair compared to my neighbor and you know we may be able to correct for that at another time but right now we're just trying to get this person to market value because that's what they're appealing is that the market value on their property is wrong and again she may have a case maybe her house would never sell for a million you know five or whatever what do we have her at a million four maybe her house uh, wouldn't... a million three right maybe if she put her house on the market today she could try it and if she won't she can't get a million three then we do have her wrong but she didn't, she didn't prove her case. And if we try to pick and choose a neighbor or do something, you know, we try to come up with a value for her, we may be doing her a disservice. And so in this case, if she'd showed us some sales data on Roland Road that proved that she way overpaid and that this is wrong, I just know that, you know, Roland is a pretty desirable street. And if she can't show me sales on Roland or Lally or something, you know, that we all kind of know is similar um, in shape and size, then I, I'm more comfortable saying you didn't prove your case and, you know, come back, come back next year or take us to court if you really have the sales data to prove it. 
I didn't misunderstand. I know exactly what we did before. I'll re-listen to it when it's available, and I'll find the one where we ignored the appraisal and went with what we thought the neighborhood was. And that's what I'm opposed to. It's not that I don't say, I already know this person, but when I'm just you saying say that, it, Paulette, when you say appraisal, are you talking about a professional appraisal or yes. the town appraisal? Okay. Yes, what I'm saying is that we this is this is all town appraisal information here. There was right. no other type of appraisal. There were no sales comps for this. And to what Kathleen summarized very well for what I'm trying to get at here is, is that I don't feel that the applicant proved their point um, with recent sales data that they were, um, that they have a hardship here or they were an outlier. This um, is Carol. This and is I, Carol. I agree. I'd, I'd like to point out uh, and then Paul, that uh, you can comment further. I'd like to point out that earlier when we were doing the property on Sunfield Road, the, the neighbor's property was assessed at $414,000, okay? But we reduced it significantly, uh, even though it was a neighbor right next door. So we're not using neighbor calculations as a rule of thumb. That's just an example of where we are not using neighbors uh, uh, estimates or, or actual appraised values as comparison. Okay. I'm and, and I'm not saying that she proved her case, but what I'm saying is that when somebody brings us this information, then we should not, we don't use it. But that also means that when we have an appraisal from a licensed appraiser, and then we want to say that the next door house, gee, that's more valuable. So this one couldn't possibly be that amount. That's wrong because we're doing the same thing that this woman did, only it's in the reverse. As I don't believe she made her case. What I'm saying is, if we're gonna if we're gonna take like take Sunfield Road, we didn't use the appraisal, but we did look at the value of the house next door. We also considered it commercial property when it isn't. So we made assumptions that aren't fair. We have no business making. But now that the homeowner wants to do it, we don't let them do it. That's what I oppose. I don't oppose that that she made her case. I just oppose our procedure, not that not the uh, not the case. So. That's okay. just my point on it. Mm -hmm. Can I, um, I just, uh, can I make a proposal then or a motion? Uh, if there's no other talk to deny this appeal and keep it at the town appraised value of 1,302,900. Um, I don't Do we have a second? This is Monique Patel. I'll second that motion. The motion has been seconded uh, by a raise of hand, and I'll get to the screen in a minute. Or I can stop sharing. John has to. John. Go. Okay, yes. You cleared the screen. Thank you. So I will call a, a vote by raising of the hands. All those in favor of denial of this appeal number, what was it? Uh, this is five, four, three, five, four, three. All those in favor of denial, please raise your hand. Oh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All those opposed, raise your hand. Paulette, I didn't see a hand I'm raised. Going to, yeah, I'm going to abstain <clears throat> Abs from voting. All of one abstain. The vote is five in favor of denial, one abstention, no opposed. Through? Yes, I have that, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it is now just about at 345, and I think that's what we said. We were going, uh, excuse me. 245. Yes, I'm at, on Atlantic time. No, <laughs> uh, at the time is 245, and uh, we're going to conclude and adjourn this session of our deliberations of the Board of Appeals. Uh, I would also like to mention that our next scheduled uh, time for deliberations uh, is going to be uh, Tuesday, March 9th at 4 p.m. And then for next week, we also have Thursday, March 11th at 4 p.m. And then finally for next week, of Saturday, March 13th at 9 a.m. And additional agendas will be posted on the town's website.
Any any comments before we conclude? I can't hear you. This this is Kathleen. Yes, um, we've posted the deliberations for four o'clock. But if we can't get a quorum until six, then we won't start until six. You know, Thanks. so just so that people are aware of that, that you know, I'll, I'm going to double check people's availability if we can get people an hour earlier, then we can start earlier. Um, but I, you know, I know some people have hearings that night as well. So, you know, we just might need to, you know, we will have them. It just might not start at four o'clock, which is fine. You know, it's not like we're starting early, which would be a special meeting. So that was it. And I'll make a motion to adjourn. I think you need a motion. So I want to make sure I, someone makes that motion to adjourn. Uh, I second that motion. All those in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. It's unanimous. Uh, I call this meeting adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, continue your good work on the hearings as well as the deliberations. We're interspersing both. We get to it as we can in the shortest period of time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have good weekend. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. We can close the recording if we haven't done so.